Good evening. We're going to call to order the Thursday, September 13th meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Um, we are not live tonight, but we are being recorded for anybody who wants to go back and watch a recording of this meeting. Uh, we always open our meetings with public comment on items that are not on our agenda. So if anybody is here from the public and wishes to comment on something that is not part of this evening's agenda, please come up to the podium and give us your name and address <clears throat> and say your piece. And hearing no public comment, we'll go ahead and open um, our 7 p.m. hearing for site plan for a major project for Seven Sisters LLC to construct a new building at 74 Maple Street, Florence, map ID 23A-34. Is there a presentation from the applicant? Hi. My name is Ginny Miller. I'm a certified nurse midwife. I'm waiting for my business partner who's driving from Pittsfield, but she probably won't make it. Um, so we can shift it for a few yeah, minutes if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a, a bought a property in Florence, the center of Florence, and uh, plan to build a uh, two-story building that involves a freestanding birth center and two apartments. Uh, we will be the first freestanding birth center in Massachusetts. Um, there are two other birth centers that are hospital-owned on the east part of the state. Um, but we'll be the first one that will be recognized by DPH, which we're going through that process right now. So we have had, um, we have an architect, Rachel Stevens from Maple Street Architects. Um, we have a civil engineer, Jonathan Ceruta, from the site plan, and uh, a landscape plan done by Maggie Leonard and um, Selena Myers, I think is her last name. So those are all included in the plans. This is a rendering of what we hope it will look like. That's uh, based on the plan planting plans and the site um, as it will sit. The building will be entered on the side. It will be on uh, right on the street in Middle, Middle Street in Florence, Maple Street in Florence. And can you talk a little bit about, uh, in terms of the site design there, I notice in the application there are some trees that will come down, there's some tree replacement. Uh, there's, um, there are four significant trees. There are, no, there, there there's are three, three significant, significant trees. trees. One is a, um, a hemlock that has been deemed um, unhealthy. There's a Norway maple, and then in the back there's another maple, um, and we, we will pr try to keep the one in the back but the other two we will take down because they're right in the middle of where the parking lot will be. Uh, along the side, uh, along the alleyway, most of those trees are insignificant or dead, and dead. And they're all leaning towards the Parsons block uh, on birds. In fact, one tree is leaning on the roof of birds. Um, so there's no way that the trees along that side could be salvaged and still be able to fit everything else on the lot. And there's a good chance that because the whole on the on the bird side of the trees, it's all paved and and concrete and it's not a very habitable section. So this is Jeffrey Bott. I'm sorry. The, the builder and project manager. So we understand that there's 22 inches of replacement tree required and that yeah. you'll be planting uh, 12 on site. No, we'll be doing the paying for we'll, them or whatever the, the agreement is. Right, yeah. because the, the trees that we'll put in the front will be much, you know, they're going to be two and a half inch trees, but there's only a couple of them. And I just figured it'd be better for the city to put them where they want them. So. But it's up here in the, in the back corner of this lot. Mm -hmm. There is one significant tree that we'll be saving. We've moved the parking lot around so that there's a cutout in it. and. Um, and it will be able to be saved. The other significant tree is um, the one in green up there is the one that we'll save. There's another one sort of halfway along the side, um, the right side of the lot that is 20 inches, 19 and a half, 20 inches at four feet. Mm -hmm. But it's leaning towards birds and 
it's got no, you know, the roots have been disturbed with their driveway. And on the other side, it's only going to be eight feet away from the building, which doesn't bode well for it. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, stop. Uh, and that's um, that's about it. Everything else is a. So, our plan is to reforest the site <laughs> with uh, with uh, plantings that are more appropriate for the for the lot. So. Okay. And so just to clarify the, the tree replacement, it's, I don't know if this is a question, Carolyn, for you or for the applicant, but of the inches that require replacement, your intention is to make a payment or to actually Both. for all? Okay, so the combination Both. still of the combination. 12 inches planted on site and then right. the value of 10 inches right. in payment. Okay. Yeah. So I have some questions about that issue, but we could probably wait till later. Okay. Unless you want to go. Well, I mean, you know, so in terms of the the organization of our meetings, you know, we have a presentation from you all, and then the board will ask you clarification questions and such, and then if then we'll open it up for public comment if there are any comments from folks here. Um, I think we'll, we're probably at a point where we can start kind of going around, sure. you know, in the board and ask for some clarification on some things that were in the plans. So, do you want to pick us off? So um, I had a chance to go to the site today, mm -hmm. and that so <clears throat> my idea, my understanding is other than the one marked in green, you're going to basically take out every tree on the lot. <clears throat> so I certainly don't agree about the hemlock tree. That's about 55 feet tall. Not we've 20. had I'm excuse, we've had two arborists who okay. said that it's totally infested and it should come okay. down. All right, and there's a maple tree up near the corner on the bird side. We've had a landscape architect look at that and said she said that once we took the trees around it, that the way the forking is in it, it will not be a good tree. It's been supported by the dead ones that are, are around it. So her advice was, we were going to keep that, and her advice was to take it down. Yeah, because she, she also suggested that <clears throat> once we saw the other trees taken down around it, we'd realize just how marginal that tree was. Okay. So. I mean, there's a possibility we could plan around it and keep it, but it, we've had a couple people say that it's not worth it. There's another solid maple tree there that's growing up straight. It's about 10 inches in circumference, just down from the lot a little bit. That isn't being enroaching on the building or anything. So my concern is Florence Center just doesn't have <clears throat> a lot of trees. And what you're proposing here are very small trees that are going to top out at 15, 20 feet maybe, and you're only you talked about reforesting the lot, but you're really putting in perennials and shrubs and not trees. So I, I just want to be able to look at that a little closer because, um, you know, unfortunately at that, that corner building that went in where the old mobile station was, we weren't able to put any trees yes. there. There's no streetscape trees in Florence. The ones that are have been dying kind of quickly in front of Florence Savings Bank. So. It's an opportunity for us to either keep some of the trees or really make well, a concerted effort. Well, I'd like to just, you know, in the front, if we plant these two river birches, I think that's what they are on the real. Those are going to grow up and be street, streetscape trees. Um, there's also a big opportunity right across the street, and it's not our property, but, you know, where Coolity, um, where the Valley Medical put in their parking lot and stuff. There's a lot of big open space there that could have trees planted on it. And <clears throat> it's just, you know, with, with complying with the stormwater requirements and the rain gardens and such, um, it'd be nice to put more big trees back there, but they're not appropriate for that kind of um, situation. Mm -hmm. So um, It's also, there's only about eight to 10 feet between the back of the building and that fence. And to then put in a building and a sidewalk, those trees are going to be, if that one tree we kept, it, it's going to be hazardous. I mean, we, we could look at planting, you know, maples or whatever in, in the front of the building, something that, that could grow up into something significant at one point or another. But, um, well, we don't have to yeah. decide that now. If you're going to make a donation to the city, I'm sure there's some 
uh, option yeah. within the planning department or staff that can decide about other trees that could go in there rather than just shrubs and perennial <coughs> daylilies for the rain garden, you know? Well, the, the rain garden is designed, um, uh, you know, the plantings for the rain garden have to be pretty specific, and DPW certainly made comments on the media that's, you know, put in. and. Um, I think the two river birch on the front, they definitely will be substantial and cre and be spreading, and so create um, you know, shade for the sidewalk and landscape improvement in front of the building. Um, and um, I th think that the offset for the plant, I mean, you know, what would happen is when someone pays the investment fund, then uh, DPW, um, the tree warden in particular, determines where we have gaps. Um, so those could get planted. They could be in Florence Center. They could be anywhere, really, in the city. Um, so that could offset that piece of it. The tree warden did actually also confirm the disease tree, the hemlock you referred to, and said that, you know, agreed, yes, that, that's, that needs to come down. Um, and they didn't flag anything else except that they want a little bit of a bolstered tree protection for that back right, tree. tree. Yeah. Okay. Other questions and comments from the board? Uh, Carol, are there any DPW comments? Um, yeah. Yes, and that I think um, many of them could be incorporated as conditions. They relate to the stormwater system. Um, uh, wanting prior to issuance of building permit or to report an executed stormwater operation and maintenance plan in accordance with what they submitted for maintenance in the garden. Um, and that th uh, with final sign off on that maintenance agreement by DPW, um, they want to see an additional tree protection detail to be revised that includes um, protective fencing at the drip line. Um, and uh, prior to um, construction, test pits just to confirm that the soils are what are assumed for those um, rain gardens. And um, then a modification of the rain gardens to incorporate a berm around the edge just to prevent this um, spillover um, or redirection um, of water and there were some concerns about um, water connections but I don't think they need to be permit conditions because those are just sort of standard utility connection issues in terms of the water connection um, it was unclear at the time that we were doing the drawings where exactly any of the utilities in the street are um, I've since been told by the fire sprinkler people that the fire line will need to be um, six inches. And um, from the letter from the DPW, it appears that so the six inch line will come into the property line from the street, and there'll be a branch off of that for an inch and a half water feed, and there'll be two shutoffs at the, at the property line for those two feeds. So those weren't, they were just shown generically on those plans. So that'll be updated. Um, the sewer line was just that they wanted a TY or in the in the existing 10-inch sewer line, and that we cannot. They don't want us to use the four-inch line that's there. Um, they want us to put a new six-inch line in and bring it to the property line with the uh, um, clean out at the property line. So that's that's all being updated and uh, as well as the berm on the rain gardens, the, the engineers clarifying that. So would so. we condition, would we just add a condition to see those updated plans with utility connections or? Um, so, the... yeah, so DPW asked that prior to construction that final revised plans okay. incorporating all the utility and stormwater okay. and, yeah, details for the tree protection be submitted. Okay. But that's not coming back before us. Right, okay. yeah. I don't right. know, it doesn't need to. Um, go ahead, George. Just on the utilities, how will the electrical? Um, the electrical will be overhead um, <clears throat> to the side of the building. If you if you look at at the site, there are two huge electric poles right in front of the door, and um, 
and it doesn't look like the electric company's got any plans to get into the underground. So, so <clears throat> I would suggest in general moving forward with new development that yeah. power line should be underground, even though it, mm. it, it can be an upfront cost at times for the, depending upon how it's being done, but it's I definitely think, taking a longer term yeah. view. Um, I, I don't know if you did the numbers on that or talked to the power company about it. But I mean, I it's still going to be a huge line in front. Right. I mean, there's, if there, the power company's somebody, not going to get rid of the line. True. I know. They're so. still going to be up there, the power lines, and eventually maybe they'll go away. But throughout Florence Center, when they did other work and, and all the new, they, everything went underground just to start kind of moving away from the overhead lines. It's, again, I, you know, I'm just putting it forward as a yeah. suggestion. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, we can't, well. we can't require it, but it's, it does make much more sense thinking long-term and in terms of sustainability and what we know about the dangers of overhead power lines and, you know, the risk with extreme weather, well, so it's. Respectfully, if anything that we're only 20 feet away from the power pole. If we right. if we buried a line from that power pole, besides it being extremely unsightful, because if, if you look at the two power poles that are in front of this property right now, the one that's feeding the fire station has got six conduits coming down the side of it going into the ground. Um, if it were something that the electric company was planning on burying those lines, then I would say yes, it's very appropriate. Right. But since there's no plan for doing that, right. I think asking to incur the additional expense. Oh yeah, no, we're certainly not. I mean, I think we're just having discussion, and I mean, you know, John's no, raising a good point. But it would be something um, that I would love. Yeah. Because it would certainly clean up the front facade of this building. Right. Um, right. And um, but you know, then you go down the street, Pivot Media, the house next door, right. and the. Uh, and the next building down all have overhead lines. Right. So. And it's a process. I mean, we know that downtown they have been incrementally burying lines, and that's so, you know that that's something that's that's going to happen yeah. over a long period of time. So, um, so a couple questions. You you know you mentioned the facade. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to the way that you've oriented the building? Where we're in the middle of you know downtown Florence, and it, there's a building with its back facing us. You know where there isn't a front entry. That it's a very um, you know, more kind of suburban design that's right kind of in the heart of Florence. So are there? No. <laughs> well, part of the issue is, is what's going on in the building. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, in the front of the building will be exam rooms where there will be intimate exams. Yeah. The birth center is in the back. And we want to have people be able to come in privately and also be able to come in the back where, and there's also an access to an ambulance. So. We think that it looks fairly nice to have trees and plantings and a nice sidewalk and an entrance to it front to the side. Yeah. Um, and it will be, it is kind of a square box, but it will be, we will really work hard on making it look welcoming and. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind the square box so much as, you know, just when we try to look at the nature of downtown and, and having access from the street and, you know, not walking past but the sort of back We're not side. having walk-in people. People are right. not going to be wandering down the street and walking in. Right. They will have specific appointments and they will be coming in for, you know, specific right. things. It's so. a, I think my point is that it's a walking kind of location. You know, you've selected yeah. a site that is, you know, sort of wants that. And so it's an interesting choice. So, the, so that's the, on the east elevation. There's, it's just the plantings. It's that's what's and a, and a wall mounted sign. Is that right? That's what well, it kind of looks like. Yeah. In the plan? yeah, and there may be uh, window boxes and benches and you know different things as we move along. Yeah. We'll see how. Are, are there any issues? Uh, I'm I'm surprised that you can put a ha like living living above a medical facility. Yeah. That's. Perfectly okay. Yep. It's not the. Um, it, it's a it's a neighborhood clinic, um, facility. So there's no. In terms of its fight the fire issue fire stuff. Well, the but the building needs to be sprinkled, but the um, the offices downstairs are our use group um, our business use group, and upstairs is residential, three R three. 
yeah. and the two are compatible except that they trigger commercial grade sprinklers, uh, uh, sprinkler system that's an R13, not an R13R. Yeah. That's what, yeah. But the clinic will be open 24 seven because women will spend the night there. Women will not spend they the night. They will not spend well, the night there. I hate evidence. You know, this is Kirsten, my partner. Hi. 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 I'm Kirsten Kowalski and I'm a certified nurse midwife and I'm the partner in this process. One of the partners. Yes. Jeff is <laughs> also a partner in this process. So this is an out of hospital birth center. Women, it's a short stay facility. So short stay facilities are facilities where women come, have their babies, but they don't stay more than 12 hours postpartum. So they will, there will be people there at night, but it's not an overnight facility. Um, that's standard to what the CABC and the Department of Public Health does in terms of their approvals of out, out of hospital birth centers. Um, so if we have clients who need to stay or need care longer than 12 hours, our regulations would be that they would actually transfer to Cooley Dickinson Hospital. So, um, and I worked for an out-of-hospital birth center in Danbury, Connecticut for three years, and that's exactly how, how we were designed. We are actually across the street from the hospital, independently owned. Um, but um, yeah, there won't be people there who will be staying for that long a period of time. I, I know some exterior lighting, some wall sconces and so forth, and looks like bollards. I don't know if those are lit or not along the sidewalk, and no parking lot lighting. Can you just walk me through the exterior lighting? The exterior lighting, uh, you know, we were asked to keep all the lighting as, as minimal as possible. So there's lighting on both of the doors uh, in the front and in the back, and on the fire exit coming down from the um, second floor. Um, there are low voltage pathway lights along the sidewalk that would guide your way all the way to the parking lot. And it was felt that there really wasn't a need for any additional lighting in the parking lot itself. In fact, it was suggested that that would be detrimental to any outside lighting. Are the, the exterior wall sconces, are those to be on 24-7 or, or come on with a photo cell? Or They'll come on with a photo cell. Because a lot of times we condition that typically. Yeah. <clears throat> typically, for commercial space, we'll say, for instance, if you close at ten at night, then the lights will close one hour thereafter instead right. of being on all night. Right. They they're not intended to be on all night. They mm -hmm. are all all well, on. They're on a photo cell. They'll be on all night. Only when somebody walks by it. Oh oh. The yeah. motion sensor. Okay. Oh, motion, motion sensor. sensor. Okay. Motion sensor. Night, night no. Okay. Motion sensor. Excuse me. Um, okay. And they're all very minimal down lights um, that are really supposed to be as unobtrusive as, as possible. We should get a, a cut sheet of those fixtures. It's on the, they're, they're, they're they're, there's it's one on, on the plan. plan. Which, uh, sorry. Oh, I got it, yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Mark, would you be interested in, in having us add a condition about motion sensor, you know, that lights beyond motion sensors? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can have, you could have a motion sensor with a timer, right? So that at one in the morning, if a cat goes by the back out, the lights aren't going to come on. I don't know who they're going to bother if they do come on, but typically that's what we do uh, in, in a commercial setting. So if you don't have any issue with that, I would... I would no, there's, I don't have any issue with yeah. that. I mean, in terms of the use, though, the facility is able to be accessed 24-7, is that right? Mm -hmm. So then if, it, if it's... Yeah, if it's 20... The, I mean, it, yeah. and we can override it. Can't you override if you're there? Well, you, you can certainly on. override. You can just turn them on. But the point is... There's going to be staff that's going to be called in. Nobody's going to be there if nobody's in labor. Um, but you know, there are tenants upstairs who are coming at all odd hours. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll be able to, be, you know, if they walk up, they'll trigger the motion sensor and the light will come on. Right. I think what Mark is saying that typically when we talk about that, we have <coughs> the motion sensor and there's a time of day at which that motion sensor doesn't, right. doesn't happen at all because it's a you know, commercial area that, that there is like a period of darkness. So I guess the question is for your usage, 
do you require that there be the possibility of motion activated lighting around the building 24 seven? I think that would be the preference if we could, but obviously, you know, we can work with other things, but ideally, have, excuse me, it would only have to be on the front door where the tenants would come in. We will definitely not encourage the tenants to come in the back door. Um, so the only door they'll be able to come in is the front entrance. And um, I mean, so you could put it, I mean, yeah. just at that entrance. I, I'm unclear, I guess, if so, if it's 11.30 at night and, and a woman's later, will they come in the back door and be there for 12 hours and lights come on and the whole bit? Or after a certain hour, you go to the hospital? Or how, how does it work? No, it's a 24-7 facility. Yeah. 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 But all so the maybe at the entrances you could have a the staff could open it. <laughs> or at the entrances you could have a motion and then on the on the on the sconces on the side of the building <coughs> those would turn off at a certain time. Right. And so we've in the past have said you know we've used the the end time of the business since this doesn't have one. We've also at other times used 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. Which so it may seem reasonable to use that cutoff for the sconces. Um, you know, 10 p.m., for example, and then, right. you know. And then leave the, the motion active. And the doorway, the motion center lights. Right. Are you amenable to that? Yeah, that sure. seems perfectly yeah. reasonable. So the tenants don't need to have a lighted parking lot when they drive in at 12 at night? Typically, we're arguing for less lighting <coughs> right. in the parking lot, not more right. lighting. Um, right. But we don't need any, doesn't need they to have be a motion sensor. <laughs> and their smartphones, they can light up their walkway with their smartphone. Yeah, it's yeah. a big part yeah. of the street. It's a big walk. <laughs> I mean, downtown Florence is pretty, has a lot of sort of ambient light at night anyway. If you've ever, having lived there for 18 years, you guys have yeah. lived there probably, if you walked down the street in Florence at two o'clock in the morning, there's a lot of light. Like, you know, the Cumbies. Just cast yeah. a big. As, 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 <laughs> an an example. Example. <laughs> as an example. Just cast a lovely Greek bow over all this. Right, village. but this is a back parking lot behind your building in a residential kind of setting. Yeah. It doesn't well, have there, is, there are buildings back there. There's apartment buildings that, that have lighting up on uh, large poles. Mm -hmm. The two apartment buildings back there. The, Houses that are apartments. To clarify, Carolyn, to clarify with you, maybe for George and all of us, if there were going to be an amendment at some point, you know, if six months from now you decide that you need a whole new lighting scheme based on usage, would the applicant come back for an amendment to a lighting plan? Um, I, so if you put a condition that said you wanted the lights um, over the entries to be motion sensor, but the other lights to be off at a certain hour, but and they wanted to change that regularly then yes they would come back they could come back for an amendment okay what about if the pathway lightings were on more or less all the time or on a motion sensor if they're very low wattage and they're down low they're only you know 16 inches off the ground they're little mushrooms and that at least in my experience completely lights the walkway so that if you parked your car in the back you could see where the sidewalk is. It's not that big of a lot anyway. Um, and be able to follow the path up to the front door. And you wouldn't even need particularly to have the light come on at the front door because there'd be a dim glow down by your feet. I mean, the, the woman who lives next door has got them all over her yard. So. I mean, I think that's fine. I think the issue is you don't, you don't want a light that's on the second floor on the outside of the building shining in somebody's window at 2 in the morning right. or something like no, that. We're not putting that so what you're <coughs> suggesting then is just the building um, facade lights be uh, um, on a timer to go right. off at what, I don't know what time you said. 11 p.m. Sure. 10. 10. 10 p.m. It is a business yeah. district. <laughs> 11 p.m. <laughs> 10:30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 25. Shouldn't be having babies after 10. Everyone knows. That. <laughs> exactly. You talk to those you babies. You talk to those babies. <laughs> so, are you suggesting 11 because it's a business district? Are you leaving late? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 11. Don't be yeah. Small. That's true. Uh, is there a, a snow removal plan, or is there a thought about where it's going to go? It'll snow. Have, it'll be removed. We'll hire somebody to remove okay. it. <laughs> you okay, George? <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't happen as a matter of course. What you right. mean? They're going to come in and take out all the snow and put it in a dump truck? 
every single Instead of every pushing storm. it into the garden, the rain garden, they well, there's a spot over a certain that, accumulation. The, the, the one. So the, let's, yeah. It depends on how much snow there is, I guess, yeah. is the issue. If, but if the, there's the fact is, in the maintenance plan of the rain, we're, we're, you should not be piling snow up in your rain garden. Right. So any snow that has to be cleared from the lot is, is going to have to be trucked away over to my house or something like that. <laughs> So is that a condition? I know it gets. Well, I think the um, rain gardens shall be maintained in accordance with plans. That's where. Mm -hmm. That's where. So that, that by in. default will take care of the snow. Yeah, and they need the parking. I mean, I think that's pretty typical in a lot of right. um, projects that you look at. That if they have, if the yeah. applicant I, has to take it away, they yeah. have to take it. I mean, away we pay for snow removal. <laughs> then we're yeah. we're back to that monitoring thing on the part of the city. Right. Over time, everybody just plows it into the rain garden during the winter. Unfortunately, yeah. so. but they are required annually to give reports about the maintenance of mm -hmm. the rain garden. Mm -hmm. So, if something happens and it's not being maintained, then that's the that's right. the trigger for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's appropriate for the board to get into yeah. that kind of micro detail about how often to shovel the walks and well, where to put the snow. It's more about Just the stormwater issue. Right, and right, that right, is our, right, right. yeah, it's, so it's. Right. As long as they don't interfere yeah. with that, they, right. can, they can plow as often as they like, it seems to me. So that's subsumed in that condition. Yuri, any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. No? Uh, Sam, any other comments? It's 24-7, that's, it's not 12 hours, right? I mean, anytime the person Arriving, then and they're on I have maybe 20, 12 hours, right? Mm -hmm. so well, you have to take into consideration the amount of time the person. So, to give an example, someone comes, um, a, a staff person meets the person at the center, then there's time for assessment, time for labor, <laughs> and time for having the baby. And then from, the, from when the baby's born, then it's 12 hours from there. So, it can vary, you know, by quite a few hours. Um, we don't, so we're part of being a short stay facility and being a facility that only takes low risk individuals. We don't, we don't admit women to the hop, to our facility in early labor. They have to come when they're in like an active labor pattern. So we both work in hospitals. It's very different, you know, in a hospital, sometimes women will come in very, very early there for many, 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 many hours before they actually give birth and then stay for two days. We're a very different model. The model is that people are outside of the facility until they're active. So the typical amount of time, in my experience, having worked in a facility like this for a number of years, is usually moms are there for somewhere from one to maybe six hours before having their baby, and then they ha and then they are in the postpartum period after that. And the transfer is, transfers are very low; it's very rare that you transfer to hospital. So, so, so if someone needs a, a C-section, they, they have to go to the hospital. They have to go to the drive yeah. Right. So we, that's why we have to have an, arra an uh, arrangement with Cooley Dickinson, which we have, right. um, that they will accept our transfers. And we have a EMTs that are 89 feet away. Which is really <laughs> <laughs> Short of having our own private ambulance, we basically have the next best thing. Yeah. Great. Well, let's open it up for public comment. If there is anybody in the public who would like to make a comment or ask a question about this project, please come to the podium. Um, please state your name and address, and don't be shy. Hi. My name is Anne Wassell. I live at 32 Pine Street in Florence. And I would like to speak to two aspects to this. Um, uh, one is that I am a retired OB nurse and basically worked in labor and delivery for 32 years and know that there are many, many women in great need for options in terms of birthing. And I think having a freestanding birth center in Florence in particular and Northampton um, is a real feather in our cap. And um, I know that it will be a desired uh, birth center. Um, the other thing I'd like to speak to is that I've known Jeffrey Bott for um, many years, and I know him as a contractor and as a landlord, and that he is really meticulous in what he does and follows up on, and I would have absolutely no qualms about him being in charge of building what I'm sure will be a really lovely facility. Thank you. That's it. Any other comments from the public on this project? 
I was told that there was a birth center in the 30s right around the corner from the Toasted Owl or whatever it's called now, Beckham where Fox. a friend of mine said both his uncle, aunt and uncle were born there. It, it was, was the Flor Florence Lying Inn. The, yeah, the Florence Lying Inn. We haven't um, yeah. been able to, to verify that yet, but uh, that's, that's the history. Hi, my name is Rachel Stevens. I'm on 39 Ravel Ave in Northampton. And um, as Ginny mentioned, I'm also one of the architects on the project. And um, I am mostly involved in this project because I, I do think it's a very exciting thing to have in our area. And I'm very um, hopeful that all will come through quickly and, and um, provide this wonderful service for families um, in this area and in the surrounding towns. Um, and. I also want to say that um, it's been a real pleasure working on this team, that um, it's been a very collaborative effort and um, all of the team players have really joined in and, and made um, improvements to the project, including the landscape architect and the um, civil engineer. And it, it's been great to have um, the builder working so collaboratively with all of the different players from the beginning. Thank you. Move to close public comment. <clears throat> Second. Second. Second, Alan, Sam. Uh, so does, and that means we can't ask the developers any questions. Right. It does. Would you like to reopen public comment? Well, we didn't vote oh, on we did, it. Yes. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just have a couple more yeah. questions. Yeah. So if you don't mind, can we hold it just for a few minutes? <laughs> Please. Great. Do you want to rescind your motion? Rescind it. Yeah. <laughs> So um, could you talk to me just a little bit about the fire escape on the side? We can't see it in that elevation. No, it's not in that elevation. It's here. Right. And that's just, are the tenants going to use that to enter also? No. No, they're not. Um, they'll use the, as little as possible, it's required a second exit yep. from the second floor. Um, I mean, the windows are egress as well. but. Um, we need a second exit. It will have panic hardware on it that will enable them to go out but not come back in. The front door, on the other hand, will also have panic hardware, but it will have a keypad that will allow them to go through it. So um, the tenants, I mean, and the other thing we did is we, the stairway exits to the front, to the street side, instead of back to the parking lot. So it's less likely that they're going to run down the back stairs to get to their car. The front stairs, the, both of their doors on the second floor are oriented towards the stairs going down. That'll be a, a very, you know, that's, that's, you know, we need to have it there. Yep. Um, and um, <clears throat> we didn't want, it's, you know, it's only going to be a one bedroom and a two bedroom apartment. It's going to be relatively small. Um, spaces but we want to add some housing to downtown so that's that's the way that works okay anyway thanks um and and i don't know what the threshold is when we have a parking lot in a commercial area whether we stripe it for pedestrians the coming from the cars to the to the oh, building mm -hmm. do we have a threshold there or is it all common sense there's yeah. i'm wondering just because the driveway curves around and if you have, I don't know how much pedestrian activity they're going to have, but the striping often just alerts a driver that, whoops, could be somebody walking out the back door. Um, yeah, I don't, there's not, I don't, there's not a, a size necessarily. This is a pretty small lot. Yep. So, um, you know, I think um, I certainly didn't flag it just because it's small and close to the building. Yep. But um, if you think it's appropriate, uh, no, I, I just noticed that it wasn't a plan. Only if the other board members also feel that it's you know yeah. appropriate. I think it's a good point to raise. I don't know that we need to condition it necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may be something that, as the applicants listening, you know, that you may make a note of that when you're hiring somebody to do the striping and think about yeah. I mean, adding in. We designed the sidewalk to curve around the building so that you know it would be out of the traffic pot pattern, you know. So if you did come in walking, you came in off the street, you'd go in. 
if you're back here. Well, we just heard nobody's going to come in off the street. They're really going to come from the parking lot. And well, it depends. The... They're going to come this way a lot by bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it here. I mean, that's that's Deuce what I'm huh? for. Yep. <laughs> we got even if you know we could put one of those electric things in front there. It the works. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we could put some striping in the front. You know. if, you, if we did a hash, you know, something there to alert people that. No. Somebody who was asking. Let, let the market let the market control that thing. Let's move forward. Yeah, I, I don't think we should no. condition. Yeah, yeah. but I'm yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad that George raised it. <clears throat> it gives the applicant something else to think about. I'm all over it. their own discretion. Um, can we go back to the facade again, just very quickly? So, in general business, buildings should face the sidewalk. Is that a requirement? Like, was there zoning relief, there's, or there's is no a, there's no requirement. requirement? Okay, so it's just a, a suggestion. Yeah, it's more about in keeping with the downtown character as opposed to a specific requirement. Okay. Um, in fact, we, you know, you guys got notice of this forum for both downtown. And center right. about design right. and um, so I think if you know there are no design requirements now for right. um, Florence Center but this may be something that the board and the community think about in the future right. about those buildings that are in Florence Center right okay it's sort, of, it's sort of like that Cumberland Farms it doesn't enter off the street <laughs> the front of it is in front of the gas pumps mm -hmm. on the side Slightly different use, but yes, this, your point is well taken. <laughs> quick in, quick out, same yeah. thing. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to review the conditions that we've discussed, conditions that were uh, previously documented by DPW and planning. Appropriate, should we close the public hearing? We can, I'm, I mean, I was just going to recap yeah. the conditions. We could yeah. I'd have a motion if someone would like to make it. Keep it open while we read the yeah. conditions. Yeah. yeah. Um, prior to start of construction, tree protection measures installed for the tree to be saved in the northwest corner of the site. Tree fencing shall be chain link at the drip line. Tree protection shall be inspected by the city. Second condition, prior to construction, all stormwater <coughs> maintenance agreements shall be submitted for review and approval by the city and recorded. Prior to final CO, a final calculation for tree replacement based on trees planted shall be submitted and replacement shall be completed in compliance with our zoning. Uh, fourth, rain gardens shall be maintained in accordance with plans. Uh, test pits at the rain garden um, provided to DPW, right? Prior to construction. Prior to construction. Um, and that a berm be constructed around the rain garden, is that right? Right, with um, revised plans submitted showing that. Showing revised, showing that on revised plans and that the updated plan showing utility connections um, is provided. And then lastly, that lighting on the building shall be um, on a timer that goes off at 11 p.m. and then motion sensors be used on lighting that's along the pathways and the doorway entrances. Does anybody have anything else? Well, I would like to suggest that the, the electrical service be underground rather than overhead as a condition, but I'm, I'm actually against that. It's not, it's not our place to, to, to push that, especially if the city is, especially if the electrical company is not, is not doing that work. That's a massive cost to the developer. It doesn't make any sense. So I, I think you differ, but it is our place to suggest conditions like that. Yeah, but we want to be business friendly, and this is a wonderful business coming to our town. There's no doubt about it, but it's the only chance we have to suggest something like that. Well, we can to recommend it, and if they want to do it, they can, but we don't need to put anything in writing that asks them to do that. That is not business friendly. That's not why I'm on this board. And George, when you say suggest, what do you mean? I didn't say suggest. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, I, I said you, you did. Yeah. I suggest that it's a condition. Oh, oh. I, I All right, suggest. you're suggesting, suggesting that we have it as a condition. condition right. Right. Yeah, I'd be opposed to that also. I don't think it's appropriate, and I don't think we've imposed it on any other developments. I don't see any reason to do it here. In an ideal world, all electrical wires would be underground, mm -hmm. but that's not the world we have. 
I'm, I would not be in favor of it. I definitely, I mean, I agree, George, with you. I, I think that it's something that we should probably, especially in those design forums and especially in the upcoming meetings, take it up at a, at a higher level for the individual <coughs> application. Um, I think we probably, if we were to condition it, I, I would imagine an applicant who had a condition like that might push back against that for, you know, for being the first applicant to have that condition. But I, I actually kind of disagree with you guys and I think it is something that in terms of thinking about, you know, both sustainability and design, it's something that we can have the conversation about in terms of new development or new design requirements. It doesn't seem um, sustainable. Well, sustainable when there's extreme weather and power lines come down. I mean, it's it's investing in resilience for climate change, and we know that that's happening. When the October storm happened a few years ago, it was devastating to the businesses because we couldn't maintain power. So it's something, a conversation we should have outside of I, an applications I hearing. I conceptually, but yeah. I don't, I think we need a mechanism yeah. right. which to hang our hat on, and that right. doesn't exist right now. Right, I think that's, a, yeah. And just to, I think to um, follow up on what Tess is suggesting, it makes Central Business District is the only district where we require power lines to be underground, and that's because the city has a renewable effort with natural grid to bury the, the street lines for the most part on main street and anyway. um, but it does make sense i think to br raise that in this sort of broader um, discussion about um in the design forum and sort of what do we want the public realm to look like and is it appropriate then to s expand upon that um on the private side of the public realm the whole village at hospital hill is underground utilities <clears throat> That's that's different too because it was a new subdivision built and that's required of new subdivisions. Yeah. Okay, so there is precedent new subdivisions. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't want to belabor the point, you know, and I noticed that there are utility ca um, gas cans outside two canisters, which are probably going to be hidden underneath the fire escape. So because Until the gas company decides to lift the moratorium, so <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Motion. Motion to close discussion? public comment. Second. Second, Alan. All those in favor? Those opposed? Do we have another motion? I will make a motion. Um, Thank you. To approve the site plan for major project for Seven Sisters Land LLC to construct a new building, 5,760 square feet for a birth center and two apartments at 74 Maple Street, Florence, map ID 23A-34 with the conditions noted. Motion by Mark, is there a second? Second. Second by Alan. All those in favor? Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you have a fan club. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, yeah. You can just go ahead and slide to what I'm driving. Oh. Same. <laughs> done. <laughs> I know. I want to I want to take advantage of that. No. What? Are you serious? Active. Oh, yeah. That's insane. Sorry for being so snippy. That's horrifying. Sorry. It's horrifying and insane. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I literally had a <laughs> massive piece of concrete in front of me. Oh, nice. Is it worth it? The worst part is I was using a jackhammer to put on them, and I hit a rock with a sledgehammer. It's full. Oh, I was like, I was like, I, the weirdest part of it is, like, I mean, I, it's just, like, I was like, I just bought some new eyewear. Well, I'm not going to name it. The first time I've used a truly industrial so, uh, jackhammer, like, you know, like, different. Hello. It actually scared me. <laughs> like I wasn't gonna let my guys in. I was like, 
Because this one, I have to imagine this was like the one. I have to imagine that, 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 that there must be some sort of safety on it. Because this thing, like, I mean, if there if you just literally pull the trigger, yeah. go. Yeah, I don't see any like, point. Drop the thing back in and hit the trigger, and the thing like started yeah. yeah. right, right by my leg, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, good to see you again. Thank you. Well, as you know, I don't agree with your recommendation. I like your glasses. Obviously. And we'll move on to our next hearing, which is slated that you need. Slated for 7.30, a site plan for Northampton Area Pediatrics parking lot expansion at 193 Locust Street, Florence and FID 23D-11 and 97. Um, we will have a presentation from the applicant. My name is Terry Reynolds. I'm here for Northampton Area Pediatrics. Um, my company is P. Reynolds Engineering out of Florence. And um, so, I'm here because um, Northampton area would like to expand their parking. Um, and so what they're proposing is, is an 11 space parking lot expansion that includes a retaining wall, fence, and a guardrail. Along with that, um, and they're proposing um, a 300 and I believe it's a 95 square foot addition in the back of the building. Um, and this is a um, major site plan approval because of the parking lot. Um, and as such, it requires stormwater management. Um, the area where it's being proposed is currently wooded. Um, and uh, all the vegetation is under 20 inches. Um, so we're not proposing to do any tree replacement per se. Um, however, um, this site um, does does uh, end up needing some enhancements, and and there are tree plantings proposed, which I can talk about in, in a moment. Um, and uh, additionally, there is a stormwater management system. Uh, some concerns were the height of this wall. The wall has been limited to four feet in height throughout, um, and it's. Uh, basically a gravity block wall. So, um, so basically uh, what's happening is there's an existing parking out front here um, that is non-conforming and it's over, it's into the right of way. Um, so we've pushed the parking back so that it is now at the property line. Um, and previous to coming here, we were at ZBA uh, addressing that non-conformity. Um, <coughs> So um, we've dealt with that. Um, so basically just trying to clean it up and, uh, and proposing that the parking along the eastern edge next to the small engine repair shop um, with the wall and a decorative fence on it. Um, so as part of it, um, we're doing, I'm doing stormwater management. So there's a small stormwater management system located over here uh, near the northeast um, portion of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a small water quality unit followed by a subsurface detention infiltration system with an outlet control and then a discharge at the existing uh, location where there is currently a paved swale going down. So uh, it's fairly, fairly basic, um, nothing too complicated. Um, there is, oh, this, I'm sorry, this is the incorrect um, planting plan. There, there's actually another tree added right over here. Mm -hmm. um, but, and um, <coughs> this, can you, you say guys where have again? A, an update the, plan. Where did you say the other? got the right one. Oh, we have the it, Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I see the difference. So, but so basically, the front banks are going to be replanted. Um, there were some site concerns that have been ongoing for the facility um, at the driveway. So, so they're replanting that to lower the vegetation, uh, going looking east 
down Locust Street. Um, and then the trees that are being proposed are tulip trees um, that have a high foliage canopy area um, to also help prevent you know, blockage of that. Um, in addition, this is, this is going to go to Conservation Commission because we end up being a buffer zone project. Um, so in this area back here, this is all invasives removal to remove knotweed and other such things in that area. So that's it in a nutshell. And I'll just Can you talk about the addition? Do you have anything else? The addition is, um, I, I, you guys have the elevation. Um, I don't have that on the screen here. Uh, it's a very small. Yes. No, no, that's an example of the fence. Oh, okay, I won. <laughs> <laughs> that's some addition. <laughs> yeah. um, it should be in the submittal. Um, it's not, not in that set. It should be separate, hopefully. Yes, we, we did have. Is, so that wasn't referenced in the original application. Is that, does it need to be separately referenced? Like the application only discussed the parking right. lot? Yeah, so that's the trigger for the site plan is the additional parking. So the 350 square feet of addition is not big oh, enough. So it's to not be, even under a purview to do right. a site plan that's, on it. It's just right. something else right. you're doing. Okay. Right. I just yeah. right. if they had come in that just for 350 sense. square feet and no parking changes, there would you be would nothing. nothing. I, yeah. I do Got have it. an elevation I could provide for. No, no, we yes, we have it. I just didn't know if you had yeah. anything you wanted to say about the addition. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a very small addition. Yeah. It's, you know, unfortunately, by doing it, they're triggering the sprinkler system in the building. Um, it's not going to happen right away. Yeah. Um, the main reason for this is there's a real need for additional parking for staff and so on. Um, so that the parking lot is really what they're, they're looking for, trying to clean up the function of the site. Yeah. So Technical questions? Did I understand correctly? So DPW signed off, but Conscom has not yet. No, we'll go to CONCOM in a couple of weeks. So we would include a condition that the, based on, um, you know, approval by Conservation Commission? No, you don't need a condition for that. They okay. need to go to Conservation Commission. Anyway. Um, yeah, the only, the only comment really that uh, DPW made was that they wanted to make sure that the detailed um, plan show clean fill to be um, replaced around the uh, retention system. Um, but that's uh, the Conservation Commission is also going to be looking at the stormwater, actually only really going to be looking at the stormwater um, system anyway. Okay. There was an issue when we did the test pits and discovered um, bricks and such oh, okay. where, where the system's going to go. Mm -hmm. So I actually did add a spec for fill to be replaced in there, okay. um, which will address that. Great. Other technical questions from the board? So where the new parking lot's going to, the new parking, those spaces, that's yep. totally going to be clear cut there. <clears throat> so there won't be anything between the abutter and No, the, the wall is wall. right up to the line. And uh, we have <laughs> spoken with Buster Siminski, uh, who's the owner over there, um, and uh, given him you know, these pictures of what it's going to look like and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, in general, it would be a big improvement. They, the, the fellow who rents the place currently is very concerned about the trees coming down on the building and uh, the shading that is causing issues for his, for his facility. There's, There's a theme I'm hearing here that trees are bad. <laughs> Tree. Well, these trees, these trees are not ideal. There are, there are a lot of locusts, and they're, they're weak. You know, um, they're, they are at that point where they're... Okay. All right. Down. I see that in the on the spec sheet. Um, currently, there's 36 percent of the parcel is open space, mm -hmm. which is really surprising. And down and now it's going to go down to 31 percent. Is that because the 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 lot goes all the way down to the? I don't quite see. Have, well, the, the have lot, all you folks been there and walked this, around the building? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all parking lot and it's all roof. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. A third of it is open space. Well, that they have, they have some open space in the courtyard area. Um, they have open space all the way around the perimeter, um, and um, there's open space over in this area here too. Um, but that's that's what it calculated out to be. 
No. Is that a calculation that DPW double checks or is it no, it's to the applicant to provide yeah. accurate information? Yeah. Is there any lighting or anything associated with parking? There's no new lighting. The lighting is um, just on the building. There's no other technical questions from the board. We'll open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public have a comment on this particular hearing, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and don't be shy. If there's none, board can continue to have discussion. Um, there are just the two conditions that were suggested by staff, which is that any, any new lighting, and we understand that there shouldn't be any new lighting, but that any new lighting meets zoning requirements, and that uh, any other conditions based on DPW comments, specifically clean fill replacing the area around the retention system. Anything else anyone has heard or would like to recommend? Well, just to stay on that topic of electricity, how's the utilities going to be handled? Because right now the power lines go right through that space. Right. So um, the utilities are going to be buried. So. Great. <laughs> The, um, I'm going to need to add, relocate the telephone pole to right here, um, and then it's going to be buried coming across the parking lot. I think we should require that they be above ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want the conduit above ground? Yeah, yeah right. 100%. <laughs> Anything else? No? I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Motion to close. Sam, second. 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 Yuri. <clears throat> and another motion. Take this one. Let's see. I motion to approve. Uh, where is it? Uh, site plan. Uh, where are we? Uh, Special permit for uh, 227 South Street, Northampton. Go one up. Uh, map ID uh, 193 Locust Street, Florence. Map ID 23B 1197. Uh, with the two, what's accepting, uh, what was it? The two things. Uh, any new lighting shall meet the zoning requirements and any other conditions may be appropriate based on the. Uh, Department of Public Works comments. Second. Okay. Second. Mark. All those in favor? Sam, are you in favor? Yeah. Okay. Those opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Thank Motion's you. approved. Thank you. Thank you. is going to trigger spring yeah, yeah no kidding uh, I can't put it on the computer right now um, because it's on this it's actually well actually you know what the, um, I might be able to get to the no it's just uh, I just read this. Right, right. I thought he told you but oh, okay. the presentation oh, right oh. if it's uh, we're such a small so we do have a 745 hearing, but we're going to pause for a little bit of technical like underneath technical it. work. So sit tight. Larger fraction than that. Mm -hmm. They just have to do a new thing, which is still expensive. Yeah. Probably. It's actually, yes. someone made this really <laughs> so, interesting comment. Um, oh, thank you. you know, so one of the very, teachers in this like class that this took. My hair. It's an inspector. Uh, so very, I just short, huh? very short, huh? Very short, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. He's going to grow out. <laughs> yeah. In his mind, <laughs> sprinkler <laughs> stuff, <laughs> like, all the sprinkler stuff, <laughs> just purely so like industry, industry is really good at pushing it. Right, right. It sounds really good. Yes, right. But the real thing is just doors. 
And he, and he like went through and he like, just like went through this whole thing of um, either way, um, in order to get it to this Rhode Island, or yeah, that, that, concert. To that concert, that concert, and it was like all of those people died. Like, it was all caused by door problems. Like the door swung in. They swung in. They were like, and and it, it sounds like it was some Rhode Island production going. Because it was because it was like those same doors had were like taken out right before the inspector came. The inspector says something they took them out. Yeah. And they put them back in. Yeah, it's not somewhere like Panama or something. It's just a band yeah. It was just, and it just and it was just like the sprinkler systems wouldn't have solved the issue, right. but if they just had had doors, right. more doors and doors that opened correctly, right. like everyone would be okay. Right. And it turns out like the sprinkler, the alarm sound system, like that's all connected to this, was just really fascinating because it was like, that was one thing they had to have, it was just code. So they, they had this thing because they couldn't fake that. Right, right. And, but, it was a noise that happened and no one heard it because it was a concert Or it sold out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or someone yeah. just sort of thought it was part of right, the, right. the concert. Yeah. It was really, yeah, that's really weird. fascinating. I'm not sure which one it is. Were your kids, were you out of the hospital that fast? No. So I can't imagine that. I don't I don't get, I'm going to make a point to tell my wife that you stayed 18 hours too long. <laughs> yeah. Like the, really, average, the average six hours, that's crazy. It's, you know, I think that one of the problems is I think they conflate the application, they conflate national statistics with, yeah, that's right. and not Massachusetts statistics. Right. You know, like if you, if you start like comparing ourselves to Mississippi. Right. So, right. <coughs> Tess, who went into no, your probably, space? Right, still. On what's up? Well, hours. A laser tattoo removal company. What is this? Laser tattoo removal. <coughs> and Lucky's? No, uh, Disappearing Ink from East Hampton. Oh, okay. Moved into my old Pleasant Street storefront. Oh, okay. And reconfigured it. Smart. I've always thought it would be a great business to have that on a truck, so you could just like pull up to someone's house. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Mobile laser tattoo yeah. removal. Yeah. Mobile tattoo removal. Pull one end, come out the other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 That's very Jessen's, right? Yeah. <laughs> Walk in and <laughs> I like that. So like going through the car wash. <laughs> right. You should have a next to hey, yes, a tattoo sorry. place next to it. I'm so snarky on that first one. Did you have a bad day? I did have a bad day. I had some what concrete happened? hit me in my head. Oh. Yeah. But I survived. Sorry, Sam. I'm good to hear. Well, You're not you concussed. One comment about the, the pedestrian crosswalk. You said, let the market. So in other so words. If somebody gets, a pedestrian gets hit. There it is. <laughs> I didn't say the mark. I, I know. That's Sam. Sam. Oh, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Well, but I, I, yeah, I just don't think. My, I'm saying the kid. I mean, I'm not. That, of course, I didn't mean it like that. I just said. If you walk or if you go to a lot of parking spaces, a yeah. lot of parking lots in town, and your eyes are open to that, you'll see there's all these conflicts with pedestrians. So just by providing that little bit of striping, often it makes a driver just slow down and alert. There's two oh, yes, places yes, here where we don't yes, provide any kind of well, allowance for a pedestrian or a bicyclist to kind of. Yeah. Right. Well, like when the new into designing parking spaces. You know, where do you put the hatching? How but like on spaces, King Street with the new, like where the Greenfield uh, Bank is. Yeah. We've we've got you know, along that's anything. King Street corridor. The intent is to so ride your bike or walk, turn into the development, and there's a there's a alleyway essentially up the gut. Right. Where you can safely get from the street to the building right. without fear of getting hit. Yeah. Uh, other than there's a couple spots where it's clearly you know, residential crossing. Right. Um, but in a parking lot that small, I don't know how. Right. That other than striping, I don't qualified it as such. But uh, there's going to be a lot. It's good. It's good for people yeah. to think about. Yeah. You know, again, like yeah. complete streets mindset of yep. it's not only vehicles that are using this yeah. space. And and right. Alan, you'd be surprised sometimes when parking lots are pitched to us. That they ha are pitched are pitched to us. They haven't been really vetted, and there'll be conflicts with cars backing up into each other, and there's not enough room. So, well, that that is a that does happen sometimes because yeah. DPW doesn't look at that. Right. Maybe Carolyn should, but she's looking at all these bigger things. Um, so sometimes I think oh, it's yes, our, our two should give us enough to our burden to kind of oh. even look at little stuff like that to make sure that. 
there aren't those conflicts happening. Right. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, it's I'm, I'm it's not sure. I mean, if they comply with the requirements in the okay. ordinance, as far as size of spaces and s distance between spaces, right. I, but if it's yeah. a special permit, that's another. You know, there's a difference between our responsibility if it's a site plan versus a special permit. And and often they the, so the people who draft these plans they'll make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> Not often, but they will, you know, and uh, I just wouldn't like to see us getting into designing parking places, parking lots. Um, no, I, I don't want to get into that either. But where do you put the striping? But how should it be arranged? I, I think we have to, my feeling is we, sh we have to leave it to the applicants to do something. Oh, that's that great. Thank you. It's rational and protective of the people that use it. There is a middle ground um, yeah, when it comes to design guidelines. Like we have design guidelines that aren't requirements, but there's they're sort of like a best practices roadmap. Like that's but that's that's a mechanism that we have to kind of get people thinking about things without making it a legal requirement, but at least documenting Our design guidelines. Well, um, for facade construction, for example, you know, like I'm saying it, it would be an interesting project to produce design guidelines for parking lots in Northampton. And then someone has a manual that says, oh, they've taken the time to look at some other cities and towns. This, these are things that improve safety. But Take they it or leave it. Exist at present? Uh, do they? I'm not aware. Not for parking no, lots. Don't. Not for parking lots. But <coughs> they exist here for um, for facade for building design. They exist. Just uh, downtown, though. Right. Right. I'm just using that as an analog. We could take on the the. The How task of kind of putting together a, a short manual on design guidelines for park. parking lots, you know, without making that a legal requirement, but just giving it as a tool to applicants who are doing a development to actually be able to leverage some of the yeah. better things well, that we like know are going. If those on. guidelines do exist for King Street, is that highway business probably that yeah. those are part of the right. New right. How do they decide the size of like you know like if you go into Walmart, it seems like the the, the spaces, the parking spaces are larger than, like, if you go into a tiny. The right. people are fatter. Well, that's, okay. that's fine. I'm fatter. So it's like, I'm, you're being recorded I support now. myself. Just to remind you. <laughs> you're you're but, being recorded. But, uh, I, I just wonder, like, I mean, I, you know, with this house that I'm doing, like, they built this, they built this uh, medical <laughs> facility mm -hmm. yeah. right down the street. And clearly, and they got all these parking spaces in it. But I know, anecdotally, yeah. that the people don't like parking there because it's Tight. really hard to. Right. I think that's the marketplace really has part of it. Yeah. Walmart does. Yeah, I've noticed some places yeah. you feel like you can open your door without right. banging someone else. Someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can't reconnect to that. Uh, I think I know they have to be at least 18 long yeah. by. I don't know if it's eight feet wide. I think it's yeah. Yeah, there's eight a, or nine. Or, yeah, but there's, I mean, Asheville so has minimally meet the, the standards, but but functionally, right. it's, you yes. can't open your door right. yeah. without smacking. Stop the yeah. shop. And get a smaller a car. Between. That's the answer, right? right? Yeah. Smaller car. Right. right. Well, you know, that's a wonderful idea until you, you know you're a contractor like myself who needs a big truck. Yeah. You know, it turns out it turns out you can't carry a two bike Tell you what. On, a, on a bike. Yeah. Tell you what, I can fit in my Scion XA. You'd be amazed. No. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, folks. Just go. Type in huh? I'm getting impatient. Thank was, you for your patience, Alex. Alan. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. bringing uh, uh, a sheet of sheetrock on a bike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be hilarious. If, if you were the, the bike right. contractor, you would get so much good press. Like, like the bakery like on a bike. If you, yeah, exactly. Right. That's what I mean. And if you were like the contractor on a bike, that would right. be contractor. amazing. Just I, you have to just be really slow. Just, right. just, it, I know it's taking a while, ma'am. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the easiest gear. <laughs> like, but, I'm, but my carbon footprint is really small. Yeah, I know you can't use right. the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this the laptop you usually use? Yeah. So there's a bunch in You have to make this motion out. Someone stole my. Uh, Agenda. All Are right. you going to kick to the other out. side of the table? I'm, You've been, I'm, I'm done for you got to make a motion. Okay. No. <laughs> I'll try to man and do it. That's the
the one thing I miss. Yeah. I find the pedal people to be insulting. Mm -hmm. I find But I can't, yeah, I can't do insulting, it. Insulting, actually. I, I find that it's just like not a, like sustainable. A, like a rainy winter, like early winter, rainy day, where it's just, you know, it's like slushy rain sideways. I guess in my mind that's not the definition well, of sustainability. Sure well, like sustainability is something that's like a modern system that's sustainable. And I'm all for supporting that, but like, cutting, cutting grass with a scythe. Right. I'm like, this is insulting to me. I'm actually doing work. I'm like, are you making a value judgment right. because I'm cutting because grass? You, have to plug <laughs> in your, your, you know, you know still soft. Yeah, exactly. You know, like maybe we should take it to the extreme. But, yeah, exactly. you know, like, Georgia had a nice conversation yesterday with Chris. Oh, Chris. Yep. Yes. Yep. Sitting in the drawer. Yep. Sure. You guys are old buddies. I actually remember seeing no, Nave, Nave. Um, I was in so, um, and I was watching this guy. So her partner, Mark, yeah. I was my <laughs> grad school advisor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In so, planning, yes. urban. Yep. Yeah. So wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, many, many years ago, <laughs> no, this is all be all partner. It's like something nice. 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 Yeah. Nice. <laughs> right, right. Like, That's fun. Suddenly it went from like, so are you in that business now? In the urban planning oh, industry? Uh, so I work for the transportation at Cambridge. I used to be a community planner full time for them. I actually took a lot of time off. I went back uh, part time yeah. in my old, my first career before Did you? school was in communications no, fundraising. Okay. So I do communications oh. for this transportation agency oh, sure. part time. Uh, and yeah. so then you can and still have uh, the other part. So I did be have full time for six years ah, or five years. Uh, um, and ah, yeah, so I still do that. And then uh, yeah. I do various yeah. other things. Good evening, folks. We're ready to start the 7:45 p.m. hearing for a special permit and a site plan uh, at 227 South Street in Northampton, map ID 38B-73. And we have a presentation from the applicant. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Jeff Penn. Um, I'm from Huntington. I'm a architect. We have our owners here tonight, too, uh, Daniel and Denise McCann. Um, so I, I don't know how familiar you all are, but um, on 227 South Street is one of the residential buildings along South Street. Um, and it, it uh, most recently was the veterinary clinic, and it's two doors down from Lathrop Home um, on the same side of the street. So our intention in this project is we're going to demolish the rear portion of the building, which had been constructed as a veterinary clinic, in brick. We're going to reconstruct in wood. And we're going to, the building formerly was the veterinary clinic with one apartment above. And we're going to reconstruct this building to have eight residences. There'll be five townhomes and three residences within the original building. We're going to not restore, but at least refurbish and make attractive the earlier uh, 1800s building on the street front. And we're going to articulate, as you see in the rear, we're stepping the apartments back. But we are also creating on the left-hand side, which you'd be able to see from the elevations, uh, porches. It's going to be very important to us to give outdoor space and some liveliness to the, to the occupants. And so the building, each apartment will have a porch, which also serves as its cover for the front uh, stoop. The, Two, the three apartments at the front of the building will also have porches, except that the front portion of the building, about where I'm putting this line across here, is where the building becomes two stories. And the area in front of that, towards the street, we're going to remove the roof and replace it with a large deck. So again, we're trying to enliven the space and make it a lot nicer and more attractive, both for the occupants and for the uh, local residents. Um, as you see, the parking area, uh, we've actually reduced the amount of impervious surface. Uh, where the cursor is here on the left currently is all paved and it will become grass, as is the same on this right-hand side. Two modifications from this proposal, if you have read it in detail, 
The, on the right hand side, we had shown temporary snow access parking. We thought that that was a good idea. It is not a good idea. We're going to be reducing curb cuts to one on this site. Uh, we will replace it with a mountable curb so that we haven't determined from the fire department what proper height, but they believe that they can get up um, six inches. So we'll just find an appropriate height that the fire department wants because uh, they want to be able to park a vehicle. So we're going to keep our fences back so that they can park a, a vehicle all the way to this location. Um, so during construction, um, we are going to, one of the measures we are going to take is we're going to protect the trees. There are two city trees right here in the grass verge and two very large trees, one being a Norway maple and one being a catalpa at the front of the building. We will have to limb. We had, we had a, a, a forester out who looked at the, an arborist who looked at the trees. We will have to limb them a bit, but they're very healthy trees and so we will be able to make them last a lot longer. Um, what else? So, to, uh, in terms of impervious uh, site, our, 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 our water calculations were not full uh, stormwater management calculations, but they do show that we're reducing the amount of impervious surface and taking care of all of the water on site. Um, in terms of our lighting, one little thing that didn't get resolved prior to tonight is that in the plan that you have seen, they located all of the lighting on the building to illuminate the parking lot. And we're not as happy with that for two reasons. One, um, uh, and Carolyn's report it reported back to us how there was too high of an intensity of light on the buildings, and we agree. We also would rather not have much intensity of light at the buildings at all. We don't want to disturb people's sleep. So right now, we've asked our electrical designer uh, to go back to his tech, and we're looking at low bollards um, over along this property line that could be directional just to the parking lot, augmented by lower light fixtures along the building. We have, um, with the balconies that we're producing, we will have an area that we can actually put the light fixtures so that they will be shrouded to the residents, but illuminate the parking. Um, the other thing that is an unknown at this moment, although we did hear back from Dave, um, Dave Valletta that there is enough capacity so that we will be able to upgrade our water. We don't know exactly what it will be yet, but we're assuming it's going to be in the neighborhood of a two-inch um, line that will be necessary, and, and we know that that will be acceptable. Um, the uh, fire suppression system hasn't been designed yet. That's why we don't know our full loading. Um, but we're out with uh, Hampshire Fire, and we may go to New England Fire as well for this design. Is. Um, we, the, currently, because of all of the paving, there's something ridiculous like 20 some odd parking spaces on the site. By, co by, by zoning, we, we should have 11 spaces and we're going to provide 13. Um, there are also, I believe, three striped spaces in front on street parking. Um, we will be doing a little bit of buffering to our neighbor. There's a small scale neighbor to the right hand side of this building and we're going to put some planters. Currently it's just grass directly over to their property. And uh, In the back there are some lilacs, lilacs that do screening and we're going to maintain and, and, uh, uh, maintain and improve those. And then these planter boxes we're go are going to give opportunity for the individual tenants to control what they're planting. Um, they're also going to have access to a private yard uh, that will give each person their ability to have their own garden. Um, anything that they'd like to set up. So again, we expect there to be some variety in the appearance. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that might be particularly important. I'll, I'll go through the quick structures that we are adding. We're going to add over here, we're adding a um, trash enclosure so that we can close it and keep the trash. Bicycle parking is going to be on these front porches, but we've designed them in such a way that there's actually a zone outside. Even though they're going to be at grade porches, there's good, we have the ability to consider it outside the porch. So for example, I'm not, I don't know if I can zoom in here, but if you're just looking at this, um, this take this end right here, the, the cover will go all the way to the corner, but we will have a post back three feet from the corner. So we'll cantilever our porch. That way there's a clear area that clear for, you know, easy for bicycles. There's one area that doesn't have that out in the front here, but we're going to make the porch large enough so that it will accommodate a bicycle as well. Um, the other structures on site, there's only a couple. We, uh, we, as I, I mentioned this here, we're going to add a play structure 
Um, it's probably just going to be an open swing set. We want to make sure that kids can uh, have a little group area that the parents can go and monitor. At the same time, there was a beautiful little cupola on a barn that was formerly on this location that we were requested to maintain and find a use for. And so we've designed a pergola that we're going to perch this cupola on that'll have kind of an attractive appearance that then again, the residents will be able to embellish. Um, there will be a bench. We're going to add two benches to the site, just uh, just as incidentally. One is here, and one will be out at the street, so that we can um, actually make it a little bit nicer for people coming uh, to wait for the bus. Um, let me think. Was there any other structures? The third floor in the <coughs> existing house. I mean, the attic is that's part of going to be part of the second floor apartment? Yep. The way we're dividing the, the existing building is that there will be two apartments on the first level and a stair up to the existing apartment on the second level, which will get modified slightly to accommodate the stair. That apartment currently already uses the third floor, and our current thinking is to not modify it, to, to just let that be. Uh, it's the same apartment that it is. There will, oh, uh, the, the last structures that we'll be adding is that each apartment gets their own little garden shed, just a tiny little shed. So we'll be able to actually, we're encouraging um, use of these gardens. And so we're just hoping, uh, we're hoping that these, all of these elements come together <laughs> in, a, in a delightful <coughs> way for people. Um, again, you know, we're, we're conscious of the character of the street. I mean, from my point of view as a restoration architect, South Street is extraordinarily close to Deerfield Main Street in terms of its stature. And we're very conscious of that. In fact, I would even push the city to go further and maybe consider a, a very strict historic district in this area. In fact, if you look at the layout of the street, originally it would have been a common street with two side roads and a center of grass, uh, much more like Long Meadow. So again, South Street is a really wonderful place, and we're conscious of that. Uh, one other thing I did want to say, um, we reached out to our neighbors and one issue that we had determined is that the steep bank at the rear that's forested, debris falls down this bank. So what we would like to do is put an interim fence. We're not going to create any more debris, but we just want to make sure anything incidental doesn't bother the neighbors. So we're going to put an, a fence that then can be maintained and cleaned out now and again. You're talking about tree debris? You're just talking about leaves and such? He has actual he, trash. He showed us there's actually things like pieces of concrete that we don't know where they even came from that <laughs> somehow goodness. rolled down the hill, bricks, things like that. Huh. It's ridiculous. But again, we, don't, we, we want to be good neighbors. <laughs> well, Say again where this fence would be. So the, the, um, I've showed two, lo two locations. One right here, and it uh, would be down. We have to locate, we have to locate them based on oh, trees. Debris mm -hmm. fence yep. that's shown here. Yep, yep. Actually, I have a question about that. Sure, sure. Is there, are there any plans for a fence at the top of the um, property before it has that almost vertical drop off? Yeah, it's, it's it seems to me that to have it that adjacent to a playground yeah. is inviting disaster. Um, again, I, I, you know, we'll certainly that's something I think for the owners to consider. But I think we'd certainly listen to anything that you uh, you know as a recommendation. Personally, I'm a very very much a personal responsibility kind of guy, and I'm Huck Finn. I grew up with a slope like that that made me the outdoorsman I am. So. I, I could agree with that, <laughs> except when it's a play, a playground. Yeah. Presumably, that's for kids. Yep. And it's a steep, steep drop off there, as you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, honestly, I don't think it poses a particular danger because I think a person can't necessarily fall down the hill, but they could roll down it. Um, I, you know, I absolutely we would consider any safety measures you deem necessary. What is 11% of 11% of the unit should be affordable? What, what does that mean? That's your, that's the, that's the. That's part of the special permit criteria. Oh, is that what I mean? That's the your good. criteria. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what am I reading? Uh, can you explain the, the emergency uh, access for, what's, what's that ground cover going to be? The uh, right side of the property? Well, we do, so when we talked to the fire department about it, we were saying, you know, we had uncovered um, a product, it's called Turf Protector. It's a mesh that you can add to grass surface that creates a very stable surface. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, <laughs> we're fine on grass. Oh, okay. uh, this is, it's very compacted. It's been, um, this is a, it's been paved. And we're assuming that when we remove the paving, everything underneath is going to be really well compacted. And we will just make sure that our new material gets compacted. Does, does the DPW have any requirements for, for that? I mean, 
Um, well, the, the only issue with that is, I mean, they're right at their maximum allowed um, or required mm -hmm. open space or minimums, I should say. Um, so they've, um, DPW has a concern that if that is used for overflow parking, then that will become compacted more and act like, um, you know, parking. Right. But in terms of an O, um, so, and, and then calculations would have to be um, resubmitted for their stormwater mm -hmm. management system. But uh, in terms of the fire department using that as emergency only, it's not going to affect that because it will effectively be grass. I mean, they should probably do something more than try to grow grass on something that's been. I'm talking about like what's under minutes. the grass. If it's, if it's, you know, two feet of loam and the fire truck goes in five feet it's going to sink if it's under if it's six inches of loam and underneath that is compacted gravel or something that can yeah. that can hold a emergency vehicle so i don't know if the dpw has requirements for that dpw doesn't and 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 in fact most of the time what we hear from the fire department is they're going to address issues from the street right. or from the parking lot mm -hmm. so this is so they'd rather like a tertiary okay. um okay. They, they want the, the the big thing they wanted is to be able to take personnel around that side to yep. have a free and clear pathway more than parking a vehicle um they typically um what i understand is try not to park a vehicle between buildings right mm -hmm. You know, they, the chief was was um, happy that we've brought the parking to where we did because over on the left-hand side of the building, he believes that with hoses and whatnot, they have full access. But again, because the building is so long, it's just, I've forgotten the figure, but around 110, 115 feet, we, we just felt ourselves that we would like to have access to both sides. And so when we recommended it to the fire chief, he said, absolutely, if you can, do it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Safety is important. Jeff, I see that uh, you've submitted a letter from an engineering firm regarding traffic. Can you yep. just talk us through that so that that's... You know, I didn't write it, but I read it. And so what he's, his logic is that using the daily visits mm -hmm. um, based on the business and based on the residents, we're reducing the traffic on this site significantly. And that's just the summary. Um, and it does seem to ring, ring true. The previous veterinary business. Right. Yep. What's that? Uh, how about snow removal or snow storage? Yeah, we've got, uh, we're showing areas, and that's part of the grassy, you know, grassy pr uh, protected area. We've got a large area for snow, uh, snow storage right here on site. We do have the ability to store snow on this side, but it's going to, what will happen is you see, see, sorry, I'll bring it forward here. This zone that I had showed you earlier where the chief would like to be able to park um, uh, trucks, we'll keep that clear, which makes this area here the sn uh, snow storage. And it, uh, you know, and as you see, we have plenty of area to to store snow. Um, so it would have to be like physically picked up from the parking lot area and moved to the other side of the building. No, just plow. No, they're just going to oh. push it. Oh no, 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 no. This, this, the, this, this is for <laughs> okay. this snow over here. But we will maintain. See, the the way that the chief uh, mentioned it to us is that. Um, they can drive in six inches of snow, so we don't have to have a th you know two or three inch snow call on that side of the building. The right hand side of the building will have like a six inch snow call, and the left hand side of the building I don't know two inch, three inch, it's one. maybe even one inch. Um, and on the left side of your drawing, where you have the snow storage, yep. that's in front of the, the trash yep. shed. Yep, yep. So is that you're aware? I mean, yep, yep. That's a concern. Okay. Just, it's just, you know, that just means that we're going to be, you know, there'll be a little zone in front shovel here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Other technical questions from the board? Is there a secondary access for people who are living on the second floor? There are no, um, okay, so the, <clears throat> no, uh, oh, 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 I see what so, you're saying, no. The, the second floor apartment has only one egress, uh, but it does have its um, um, emergency egress, right. and plus it has three balconies. Tell me about the emergency egress. I don't see it on the elevation or the, the plans. Emergency egress is the window size. You know, as, as per code. Is the window size to the balcony? Uh, yeah, actually some. <laughs> there's, a, there's multiple windows around the building and we'll have three balconies off of the second floor apartment. And 
I venture to say most of the windows are on balcony. Okay, so then, and how does a person get down from the balcony? Are there exterior staircases? Well, no, 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 this is just, uh, the balconies are not uh, means of egress escape. They, well, I mean, they so, could be. So what is the means of egress escape if there's a fire and I'm on the second floor? Well, yeah, the window, but as is, as is typical yeah. everywhere. Okay. You just have to get out of the building. They don't have to give you stairs to get from the second floor down. Is that right? Really? On the previous hearing, why did they, they have one? Yeah. Why? Well, maybe because that was commercial. I don't know. I don't know what the. There are there are code requirements, and we are in a threshold um, that in our in our um, construction type. Mm -hmm. One one egress is all that is required, mm -hmm. but we are actually like I say we want safety. So we actually were thinking about that, and that's one of the reasons we opted to make sure that there were balconies in each direction from the building because that does make it easy to get. Doesn't require <coughs> other technical egress questions from the board. No, it's it's egress from the building. Seems like a good time to open it up to for public comment. So we are going to open this up for public comment. If you do have a comment on this hearing, please come to the podium and give us your name and your address. Escape window. Which and don't be shy. Big enough that you can right. Just do a No comments from the public. Oh, no, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Amy Meltzer. I live um, on. I live across the street, uh, the just off the corner of South and Olive Street. This looks beautiful, so it really looks like a, an amazing addition to the neighborhood, and I really am grateful for your respect to sort of the, the, the view of South Street. I have one question that I just wanted to, to bring that really relates to both this project and the project that um, is proposed for the corner of Olive and South. Um, I looked over the traffic. It, it makes sense, right? It, it makes sense for the total number. But I have concerns about the fact that this exit driveway is almost directly across from Olive Street. And if we have seven more, seven new, or six, new, six additional residences at peak, peak time, turning, particularly turning left onto South Street, right, to go into Northampton, plus an additional 12 units, which are much bigger than your unit, so probably, you know, debatable number of cars that we, we all have different opinions about, but uh, I'm concerned about what's going to happen for the safety of people turning at that pinch point. We all know there have been, there's a, there's a lot of issues around congestion of South Street, and I'm just asking the planning board to consider that as the number of residents is increasing all around this one little area, and that all those people turning reminds me of some other really tricky intersections in Northampton where there have been pedestrian fatalities and mm -hmm. car fatalities. So I just want to bring it up. And I want to also thank you for going above and beyond the number of spots, because those of us who live near South Street know that there's already a problem with enough parking. So thank you for being mindful of that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Discussion among the board? May, may I, uh, I, I very much appreciate that comment. And one thing I'll just uh, completely off the cuff just throw out yeah. to you is uh, because we have the um, bus waiting location, <clears throat> would it be appropriate to add a pedestrian crosswalk, which would have the effect of traffic calming? I think that's probably, typically we try to avoid what are called mid-block crossings, you know, when it isn't, um, you know, an actual intersection. Um, you know, it may be something that the Transportation and Parking Commission would look at, I would think. But, um, you know, it's, I think it's, a, it's always a good thought to imagine crosswalks, but mid-block crossings tend to actually reduce pedestrian safety in many cases. So yeah. we'd want to just be really mindful of that. Um, but, you know, I would think, I, I don't know what the process is, if people have ideas like that, if it gets to into the Transportation and Parking Committee on City Council, or if there's, if it's, you know, a suggestion that gets submitted to DPW, but I think, um, you know, yeah, there, it, we could certainly also look at speed limits in that area and where speed limits change and maybe when, you know, there's an opportunity to kind of rethink that, we could take that into consideration. Yeah, just the planning board. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Transportation yeah. and parking would be the place to sort of initiate whether there's a demand for a crosswalk mm -hmm. at the intersection. Mm -hmm. Certainly not mid-block. Right. Um, this, uh, because there's a reduction in traffic generated to and from the site, it's going to be a lot less, fewer trips exiting. Um, so there isn't any traffic mitigation required. So. 
question on on the lighting since the lighting plan that we have is not what they want to do and they're also recommending uh, low level light bollards which I don't have an issue with but we don't have that in front of us how do we condition that to give them enough leeway to do something within those parameters? So, I mean, the zoning stipulates what's allowed in terms of light levels. So as long as they're meeting that, you sh I mean, if they show you on the plans where the lights are and they're not up there and, they meet, and, and whatever they pick meet the um, zoning, then there shouldn't be an issue. You wouldn't need to create a condition or anything of that sort, except for potentially the color because we don't have um, stipulated in the zoning so if you so just want to say colors. right and, and then just say I'm otherwise like the light bollards aren't even shown and while they might sense it's one thing to condition you show a light just it's got to conform to zoning but where they don't show a light but want to put a light yeah and we're okay with putting having them put a light how do we you know how do we prevent them from from creating a circling the all, for, you know yeah. site with with bollards every two feet on center or something which is not the intent well, I mean, you can specify that there, um, you might want to find out more about, um, th they would probably be behind each of those parallel parking spaces, and I don't know how much land is actually available to I mean, put do you, in Do you envision one per spot in that location? No, or? not even. Um, no, it, we're conscious, so this is a funny thing, it's a very interesting, uh, we don't, We'd, ha we'd rather have no lights, I suppose, and have flashlights for people, because we don't want to illuminate the neighborhood. So w what we're thinking is that if the balcony, the balcony is going to give us the light level on the building mm -hmm. side. And in terms of the bat diagrams, we think that we're going to act, that will actually get us close at the far point of the parking lot. So we think these bollards are going to just be infill lighting along there. And there could be two, there could be three. We don't know until we get back from the tech. So would you have an issue if we conditioned it up to four bollards on the sure yeah yeah that side I, I to give you some off. leeway and whether it's two up or to four it could be zero yeah I mean it's a small area as well there's not a lot of space between those yeah. parking spaces and the structure so and the ambient light may be enough that there's that's not even required I mean maybe what you want to say is no parking lot lights and if they decide they need some. Well, this is a, I mean, it, it's not a parking lot light, you know, 12 foot pole. It's a light bollard three feet tall. Right, but you still have, um, I mean, that's right on the property line. So unless they're completely, I mean, you'd have to have full cutoffs on the rear so they mm -hmm. don't spill over the lot line. Um, and there is a house right on the other side of that alley, Hebert that drops down and it's it comes right up next to that um it's not shown on this plan um so the and i'm just looking at a picture of google earth the windows for that first floor of the house come right across you know a right parallel with those bollards mm -hmm. um i can't remember if you're proposing a fence on that side or we're, not. we're not but the area yeah. that, um, that the city took is right away about 10 feet wide to the left of our property line that's a vegetated area and we we'd like it to stay vegetated and in fact we would certainly even entertain no negotiating with the city to say hey could we take it over again and maybe plant something that is a better buffer because again we're very conscious of not wanting to light pollute the neighborhood i mean and, they, and they we, show two lights now and you're not sure if that's going to be adequate or not, right? Well, the, those were the, so. The pro, here is the problem when we were uh, when we were actually doing that. I, to be honest with you, she was on vacation, <laughs> and I remember the discussion. We weren't sure if we were going to keep the existing light hole that, that is there. We didn't really want to do that, so I figured we'd better show it to you guys in case we need it, so that we can take it off. But now we're certain there won't be any light holes. We don't want that at all. So the ones that we showed are possible, probably, there's two, there's two of them shown, and it's possible that they, though they, they would be the suitable locations for bollards. But again, we'll have to wait till our tech gets back to us, and we're happy, you know, I'm happy to bring this to Carolyn or anybody that would like to see it. So how, how could we either condition that or, or, or process this without knowing? So what's shown in front of us are two full-blown parking lot lights, which the applicant doesn't want to use. Right. So, and we're okay maybe with having them use light bollards if they're even needed. 
So how, how do we? Can, I mean, could, we make, could the ballers be an amendment? I mean, that would be. Well, yeah, I mean, so you're not going to be able to see say this, something like the, this is the Google Earth shot of the location. Yeah. So there's a house right there with those two windows right next to the strip. Um, that strip of land is for the purposes of um, transportation access down the hill to um, the river. Mm -hmm. So there's no guarantee that this um, landscaping would stay there on the city side of this strip of land. I think, I'm not sure, and that parking lot is not very big. I, no. again, would say you probably don't need parking lot lights when you have lights on the doorways of mm -hmm. those units. Um, so, you know, one thing you could say, do is um, stipulate that there are no surface lights even take down what's existing and nothing installed and then if they feel like they really need something after they can come back and show exactly where they want it why they want it and where the lights going to be could you, you say issue with that no no could you say something like uh they they have to put in um a fence if they put lights in the i think you want to see the fence i think at yeah. that point it's an amendment and it should come back to the board because we want to see that. So we could make a condition now, no lights no. on that yeah. side. Is that the west side? I don't know what side yeah. that or is. Or just no lights in the parking area. calling it west. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right, on plan west, no lights on the west side of the parking lot. Yeah. And then if you decide Feel you need, need them, them. come back. Okay. 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 Is everybody comfortable with that? Yep. So are we going to get a new lighting plan, though? I don't. Um, I think only if. Well, actually, I guess if so, the building we lights, have, yeah. we have that in production, but it, it, we don't have it okay. yet. Okay. We'll certainly supply. I think for the, for the building yeah. lights, they can just comply yeah. with zoning, and they don't get any relief or from going anything yeah. different than what's allowed in the baseline zoning for by right lights. Okay. Because I'm wondering about that long walk from the parking lot to apartment number eight. Mm -hmm. That's all dark back there. Because <clears throat> the. No, they, <laughs> I mean, there will there are lights over the entrances, so for each door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. In the, in the corners. Is that? I'm sorry. In the corners of the balconies. Is that so right? so there there will be like a you know there will be a light fixture for each door you know our, our typical code light so you switch it yeah. and it's right uh, you know adjacent to the door, but in addition to that that's where we're talking about how outside of their actual porch area on the we haven't determined yet whether it's a. a a ceiling mount or a wall mount that's going to be in that either on the beam or on the soffit mm -hmm. to illuminate the parking area. So it'll be outside of the outside of their private entry, entry but illuminating the public walkway and um, uh -huh. <clears throat> and parking. Okay. And again, since we're they had done it with the bat the diagram that you folks had 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 them located up at the eaves. And as soon as I saw that, I went, no, <laughs> we're not floodlighting the balconies right. on people's bedrooms. Right. So once we move those lights down, our, our arc changed, and it, we're not certain we can get all the light level across. That's, that's the only reason that we have the bollards even in play. Okay. Were there other comments from DPW? Um, uh, none that really are, you know, there's some water and sewer connection comments, but um, okay. nothing that nothing we need, need to, to talk about. Um, other than just um, making sure that, um, you know, they, they want to um, press the point about not using that driveway for spillover parking. That the we're, emergency access. We're way. on board. There's going to be a sign, keep area clear. <laughs> so the. I'm just looking at this, and I mean, I, that was my bet, so I, I have been in that parking lot. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm just wondering if it would make sense to put something, I mean, this is purely optional, but in the area that says snow storage, uh, is there a way that you could put some sort of turnaround there? Because I just don't understand how you turn a car around in nine. You know, that's why, to be honest, that's why we made an extra large handicap striped zone because we anticipate that is the backup turnaround for turnaround we're, we're, we're on the right side of the parking lot we can look and you'll see space with the with the handicap yeah. below that space yeah. we've we've striped a large area so that it would be suitable for a turnaround space because we, we were in the same boat we looked at it and thought geez how does somebody come and go so you turn into nine and you back out and you turn back what 
It's the hatch. Well, I think you space. don't get all the way. I mean, you can see if there's if seven, eight, and nine are open. You can see if they're open, so you cool. wouldn't. Well, well, as a practical matter, people would back into the snow storage area. Hmm. Yeah, probably yeah. People take the easy route, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I was saying. Sure. I would imagine that you're going to have people driving on your grass. So I thought maybe you know, think about they're right at the limit, though. I think on right there can't be any know, more impervious surface. Space. Oh, right. So I don't think they'll want people backing onto the grass. That'll just become a mud yeah. lot. Um, mm -hmm. This is similar to across the street. In my mind, it is similar across. I mean, the parking situation, you know. Mm. It doesn't, because um, uh, I think that turnaround space will be used when a visitor comes or a guest comes. Somebody will fill it up if all those other spaces are taken, mm -hmm. and then perhaps you'll end up driving up there and then back and back out onto South Street. Unfortunately, when that, when the people in Number Eight have a big party, you know, and all their friends come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only people without friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I may miss the part about the uh, garbage disposal recycling containers. Where, where are those placed? So that's that's what this um, shed structure is for here, and they will have bins inside them. And we haven't designed the doors yet, but we're imagining either um, you know sliding where? doors or openable doors. Oh, uh, that outside. outline of yeah. the box. Okay. Yeah, right here at the top of the bank. There is a drawing. Um, there's a so, drawing of it in another sheet that. Uh, and then how will the trucks access that in order to pick up the garbage? Well, it depends. If it's pedal people, pedal people. then they're, they're just, uh, you know, <laughs> that's the size that they'd use. If it's the, if it's the uh, what do I say, if it's a recycling vehicle, they're going to have to back in and just access it. And, and, and that grassy area that we don't want people backing into. Well, they would back up close to it. Um, okay. Well... Is there room for the the garbage shed? So is it a dumpster? No. Is it a dumpster? Are they canisters? Oh, so it's this thing right here. So if you plow all the snow here, we're going to get to that. It's designed to free condition that you want to propose, George? I, I don't think you can condition yeah. that they will use pedal people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although pedal people would love that. Right. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other comments from the public? I'm sorry. I, I missed your comment because there was a couple things. Are, are oh, uh, uh, yes. No, we're fine. I, yes, we were all okay. <laughs> talking over each other as we shouldn't. Anyway, right. there's one more comment from the public. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I believe you addressed this. I did read through stuff. There were like 25,000 documents, and I'm, I have no expertise in this, but I did know from studying parking lots that there's generally a condition with a special permit that you can't have five consecutive spaces, and I, I believe that was addressed, but I didn't understand, and no, as precedent, I am just, just want to inquire about the five consecutive spots, which I understood was not allowed by the special permit, so... We, we didn't address that except in the text we did address it and it, it's simply a function of the fact that we've got so little land area that we don't have the ability to create a large um, break for any kind of vegetation and the other thing that's a little difficult is that in this small area any break or curbed break would really make it difficult to maintain and plow right. so um, I don't know that's that we, we had talked about that earlier but not not tonight so this is one of those cases where you know, the developers made a trade-off to have the additional space, and it seems like that's useful for the size of the the project. I don't necessarily, I mean, I kind of caught that as well, that there are six consecutive spaces. Um, I think it probably is, is a worthwhile use to have the number of spaces that you do have without giving up, you know, or giving up the turnaround to kind of shift something and have a break, but um, I don't know if other folks have concerns or comments? May, may I make, uh, I'll tell you why we did it. The, the existing ramp lands in such a way that, that our turnaround um, striped area would get you right to the end of the ramp. We now know because, after having talked to our electrician, we are, by the way, we are burying our power, but when we bury the power, we have to remove the ramp to bury the power. So right now, um, 
that the McCons are in negotiation trying to figure out if this will be an accessible apartment or not. We've designed it physically that it can be. Mm -hmm. It may not rent that way early, um, but we will have the ability to bring the ramp back if we ever needed to. That's the reason that we located it there. Secondly, that further back, because we wanted to make sure that those fur back, farther back spaces would have the ability to use the turnaround. But we would perfectly, we would be happy to um, pull that forward if possible. It would not it would monkey around with our ramp, but uh, we could pull that turnaround forward so that we were at the five spaces. Um, I'll, so I think maybe if you go to the landscaping plan, you've added a um, um, landscaping between the sidewalk and the parking. Otherwise, the parking layout that exists now isn't being maintained. So it's not a right. new parking lot that's being mm -hmm. created. Right. Um, but um, you've added some landscaping to the front, which is not there before, which creates a, a little bit of a screen to that parking area. Yeah. And, so, um, and I just want to, we've dealt with this in the past, when people back out, those lights are not going to go into the, the neighbor's property, like into their bedroom? When you mean when people aren't to allowed to back out They'll onto South out Street. Ways. It's a, it'd be illegal for them to back out onto South Street. Yeah. So that's why they have to be turned, they have to turn around. So I guess the, the what Carolyn's bringing up is that there's, there is some screening so that a person driving past the site is not seeing six parking spaces uninterrupted you know straight from the front back so the question is are there are there concerns with that current layout or is everybody okay with that so um, my concern i guess is with there's no internal sidewalk right well the, um, ra the ramp functions as one um and when it's gone <coughs> there will there will be a continuous sidewalk from the street all the way to, to the rear at, at unit eight and then what prevents the cars from enroaching on the sidewalk well we haven't we're not sure whether it's going to be a Cape Cod berm or stops, but we could we could institute something. Um, right there now, there's nothing on the plan. Somebody could just pull a big truck. Your truck would probably eat up that whole space and, uh, and back into the balustrade, like the Calvin Theater or the balcony. I wouldn't I wouldn't back up because that's illegal. <laughs> one, one of our thoughts is to have different materials. We had we, we didn't, we're just starting to talk about that today, but we didn't talking about it one possibility is to make the sidewalks concrete mm -hmm. and then the bituminous on the parking which would also gr create a visual barrier but again we're we're in discussion as to whether it's going to be a Cape Cod berm at the edge or whether we need curbing now we know that we are uh, that there's a requirement or at least a re request to make sure that we don't allow people to drive over this grass in the front right. so we're going to add curb there um, but we hadn't determined what to do with the sidewalk. So absolutely, listen, we would understand your concerns. And, uh, so I think Thoughts? we have, I, I don't know what to condition, but there right. needs to be something that says there will be some kind of impediment. Some from, delineation, either a curbing or wheel stop. Right. <clears throat> and leave it at We don't have a lot of room, though. Yeah. Be nicer. Mm -hmm. So some kind of curbing or wheel stop between the Parking, parking and sidewalk. <clears throat> Long term, I can't say if the planters would be maintained. And this, these are townhouses. It's a combination townhouse, so there's not an association at all involved in this. <clears throat> it's all rental. Yeah, it's all rental units. So just to recap. Well, we don't know that. Well, I mean. I guess you could decide to sell them all off as condos at some point. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's not the it's not the current intent, but you're right. Right. You're right. So current conditions, um, just as a kind of recap, and just. Well, I have one other thing. If we're yes. onto this, um, I I think there should be a fence back there by the play area. I don't normally think we should get into. I'm Those surprised, Alan. I, yeah. yeah, right. Well, just show the flex of it. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, immediately adjacent to the play area, which is required by the ordinance. And I think it can be implied that it needs to be a safe play area. And I don't think it's safe to be right next to a, a almost vertical drop off. And it's not a big deal. To, they could put a fence starting with the tree there. So to the 
end of the property that would cover all the grass and play structure area. Excuse me, would, would you be amenable to a um, prohibition planting, you know, like low arbor vitae or something that would also keep people from going over, over to the edge? I guess that would probably suffice if they were tight enough. Uh, um, There's a lot of plants on the slope as well. I've been over there with my own children quite a few times, and if you fell, you wouldn't get very far. It's, sh it's shrubby. So, I mean, then there's trees all, all the way down. So, it's definitely not like, <coughs> it's steep, but it's not like falling off the edge of a cliff. It's more but like. You, you also you know, mentioned like, that there is going to be a fence about five feet down in order to stop the debris from going down? Probably halfway down, and it'll be a very low fence, like maybe halfway a 30 down. inch. Or, fence. Yeah, just a debris fence, yeah. like a, almost like a snow fence, a small. Uh, like a toddler sized debris fence. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the event of it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, you know, I, maybe. A I four foot think. stockade fence uh, would keep kids <laughs> from falling down there. I'm wondering if the visually, if visually, um, how would you feel if we if we p took our lower fence that we're proposing and pulled it up slope, so that right now you see we've got it way down the slope. This drop is I don't know what it is off the top of my head 60 70 feet. It's pretty it, it's pretty long. What if what if that you see how I've located one over in here? What if that continued along so that it's like maybe 10 feet from top of slope, so that we can so that visually we're not looking at the fence, but it would stop people from going. I guess that would probably take care of my concern, as long as it continued to the end of the property line. Yeah, I think that maybe maybe that's a good solution because it will also be our debris fence. So right. it, as long as it's over the edge of the slope. So you would collect debris and little kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any momentum. Right. 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 Little people don't pick up little kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Just to clarify with Carolyn, so we would condition that? We would make, if you want that as a board as a condition that you How do other folks feel about that? Makes sense. Can we call it a toddler fence on the <laughs> condition? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> breaking new ground here with toddler <laughs> fencing we'll maybe modify the zoning um, so that would be a condition then that the the debris fencing be continued um, so would that be would you stick with the the five foot or go down to the two foot on the other side of the existing tree so I, I would uh, you know by your recommendation but here so maybe what we would do is where we say approximate location of five foot fence I don't, I'm not certain that that one even needs to be five feet. Yeah. So maybe what we do is this location seems to be more of an appropriate location after this tonight's discussion. Mm -hmm. So maybe that fence extends to property line. And maybe you just tell me how, how high you think would be safe. Is, is 30 inches enough? No. Pretty tall. Three feet? Yeah. If you're rolling. <laughs> yeah. What do other folks think? 36 inches? Yeah. At least 36 inches. There's would that be visible from the? That wouldn't. Okay. So continuation of fence to property line, entire fence at 36 inches in height. Uh, other recommended conditions were prior to any start of construction, tree protection measures shall be installed for the trees uh, that are saved along the front end of the property. Fencing shall be chain link at the drip line. Tree protection shall be inspected by the city. Uh, all we mentioned this earlier all exterior lighting would meet zoning requirements and be no cooler than 3000 K in temperature prior to final CO a final lighting as built shall be submitted showing compliance with those standards and no surface lights will be permitted on the site so unless you were to come back um, no parking will be designated on the east side of the building you've already mentioned that uh, no spillover parking on that east side of the building uh, and that curbing or wheel stops be included between the parking spaces and the sidewalk. Um, and then last, any other conditions or comments provided by DPW. Does anybody have, sorry? There weren't any. And there weren't any. Uh, anybody else have other, anything else I left out? Well, <clears throat> I guess I'm just a little bit concerned about the, the garbage disposal. I'm sorry to bring that up, but it becomes an unsightly thing in many larger you know group homes where there, it is a big dumpster afterwards maybe it isn't and i think eventually it would just 
be kind of rolled out into the parking lot and perhaps take up a parking space that happens quite a bit. Um, but it seems like, and a truck won't back up into where it's proposed right now because of the grass. So and they're not gonna roll around those dumpsters out to the grass. So I'm wondering if that doesn't need to be in a paved area, um, the recycling end, because down the road, um, people won't just be using the buckets. It may go to a larger kind of dumpster routine. Well, what you can say is that no dumpsters are approved for the plan because then, then if you do have the rollouts, they can always roll them out to the street and the truck can come by just on the street. There, mm -hmm. I don't know if they do that on South Street, but there are many neighborhoods where you have to bring your yep. out to the street anyway yep. with the roll up. So you could just stipulate that no dumpsters are, are allowed. <clears throat> Okay. So the, like the, the truck just go and back up all the way. Right. Well, the, the trucks don't back up typically because if they're getting a dumpster, they have the front loading fork, so they would have to go in and then back out. That's what I'm saying. If there's no dumpster, they're not going to need to go in yeah. and do that. They have to roll it to the street. And I guess the good thing is that there is more, there are more parking spaces than would be required here. So if in the future they wanted to have a dumpster and wanted to have it on a paved area and give up a parking space. By the calculations, Legally, they could they afford could to lose a parking yeah. space to some sort of <coughs> But they would also trash. have to come back to the board if that yes. was a condition. So then right. you would see right. that. Okay. So I would be comfortable with a no dumpster condition if other folks are comfortable with that. Um, public comment is still open, so I would entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Move to close. Alan? Second? Second. Sam? Mark? Mark, all those opposed? <laughs> those opposed? Um, any other comments before? Go Did ahead. you mention the condition in there about the uh, the, the parking and the sidewalk? Yep, yep. Okay. curbing or wheel stop between the parking okay. and sidewalk would be required. I would hear a motion. I'll move Alan. that um, special permit and site plan for partial demolition and reconstruction to convert, convert veterinarian slash residential use to eight residential units, 227 South Street, map 38B73, uh, including the conditions just reviewed. Second. Mark, second. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. And we do have some additional business. Thank you. Um, how many ANRs? Oh, okay. No ANRs. So there are no ANRs tonight. Folks, we do have some additional business. So if you wouldn't mind speaking in the hallway, uh, do you want us to do the service net first? Sure. Okay. Um, we do have some additional business regarding exterior facade changes to the service net building. Um, Sagan? Yeah, I'm going to ask Carolyn to explain what the changes are and then we'll have public comment on that. I have to jump in on that. I have to recuse myself from that discussion because the architect is a tenant in our building. Oh. I'm, and I'm not sure if I need to recuse myself. I own two properties yeah. on that. On Edward Square. In where? On Edward Square. No, it's not Edward. It's, uh, this, is, um, this is Village Hill. This is Village Hill. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get out of it, Sam. Yeah, try, <laughs> Sam. Um, so yeah, I, there's a question. Yeah, so. You all approved a plan for service net building. There's an right. element from the facade of the facade that right. hasn't um, been installed yet, yeah. and so they're asking not to install it. Um, so here's the issue. So it could either it's definitely not a staff level review for an amendment because it's more than just a minor administrative change. Um, there are other two other thresholds. One could be that you all can make a decision and decide that it's an administrative planning board um, adjustment mm -hmm. or determine that it really rises to the level of needing a, a, a site plan amendment because it's a design change or for whatever reason if you think it needs more public discourse. So if you think it's a uh, administrative character and you want to um, weigh in on it um, tonight. You can make that decision as a board. Um, 
and if not then you would just simply be saying this is significant enough that it warrants a you know an amendment which means that an application would be submitted um, with rationale provided as to why they want the change it gets advertised we notify the abutters and then you hold the public hearing on the amendment well it's a fair it is a fairly significant change to the facade so you know having read through it I mean I would be comfortable if we had a discussion tonight and decided that it would be administrative but I I could also see the merit in having you know having an applicant come back and have it be noticed and um, you know particularly for people on Hospital Hill who are following the process and the application and we're expecting the building to look a certain way for various reasons including sustainability then you know there may be significant public input um, that we would want to hear uh, how are other folks feeling uh, having read it I'm more about having public hearing mm -hmm. because I think the comments here um, they come up with I think um, initially I thought well maybe not but then I, I read the recommendations here um, and um, based on this this these points that brought up in here in the design and the sustainability, I think you shouldn't have a public hearing for that. So they're just getting rid of this fin thing, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to make it uniform with the other building? That is, that is the build. The, so what you received is, in yeah, your staff minus. report was what yeah, the, the original the simulation was. Yeah. Plus, yeah. And then and what the existing element. condition is without the added um, yeah. element the so the purpose of it it's it's both a design element and an energy reduction element because it's a yeah. shade fan <coughs> it's designed so, to help cool the building so if they reduce energy use and then you also if they don't build it then they have less of a carbon footprint because they don't actually have to use the materials um, I think we I think probably that that probably wouldn't be the case I think over the lifespan of the building I think it probably would pay for itself yeah. but that would be we could probably do the math on that. And then just to be, I don't know if everybody received it. We did receive a memo with justification for um, um, why ServiceNet wants to leave these off. I don't know if everybody was able to receive their email today. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that's out there as well. Um, yeah, I read both, yeah. right? Uh, and quite frankly, aesthetically, I, I always drive by and I like the way it is. but. Then when you start to discuss the sustainability, the, 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 the design and principle of sustainability, if you are committed to carrying on that sustainability on their design, if they're not doing and that's something that really fulfilled that kind of a, I don't know if it was a requirement, right? But um, if they don't have it and it has to do with the sustainability, discussion um, I think it should open to the public that's what I think mm -hmm. <clears throat> but so this is a question so if we I mean if they say listen we don't want to do this I know we know it was part of our design like we ha we have to make them put these fins in? I mean are they getting some sort of have they, have they gotten money from the city for for building a environmentally friendly property or? it was something we considered during the application you approved, yeah. a project. So you approved the plan yeah. Yeah. you know this was one of the factors yep. that we considered so that's why it's coming back to us right. now it's not just sort of like we're using gray brick and stuff no no i get that I, I understand that i'm just so we could say we could decide right now that it's not a big deal and that of all of the things that we considered when we permitted the project that this was a minor consideration but we could review the minutes and say w that sustainability and, and energy use of the building was a major consideration. Um, and that's the, the question. So that would sort of guide us towards if determining. I understand your question that these fins, for lack of a better yeah. term, were built into the cost estimates from the get go because that was what approved. And I know from that. And then the, the, the subcontractor around the window and the fins just wasn't able to produce them at a given time and now it's come up that they're 
perhaps not relevant. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. But it, it's not a new cost, theoretically. Right. To yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So right. Right. I mean, I think, go ahead, Mark. Oh, no, you're no, accused. Yeah, so. I have a number of thoughts. First of all, uh, I mean, we would have approved it initially at the outset, even without these fins. I mean, nobody would have said, we're turning this project down unless you put fins on the windows. So they've decided after the fact not to put them on. And that personally doesn't bother me. Looking at the building now, uh, first of all, I, I think given the number of trees they've planted in front of it, in a few years, you'll barely be able to see the building. Um, and the presence or absence of these fins will be unremarkable, will be not noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, looking at the fins that they started to install just on the one corner, they, they put some on and then stopped. Um, there's a couple of things. First of all, they don't appear to be similar to what's shown here. <clears throat> I don't know which way that cuts, but the fins, as they've started to put them on, are really barely noticeable because they're parallel to one of the lines on the windows. The existing windows have a horizontal line, and the fins are on that same horizontal line. I had to look two or three times before even locating mm -hmm. So it's not going to make much of a difference one way or the other to the appearance. The other thing is the, the, the point that Carolyn makes about the design guidelines requiring that blinds not be used in buildings or be discouraged. I, I think that's kind of crazy. I mean, to tell people that they can't pull their blinds down because the public has to be able to see into where they're working. I, and that's not true of other buildings on Hospital Hill. Um, people pull their blinds down. The Fazio building is right at ground level. People pull their blinds down. I, I don't understand that at all. Um, and as far as sustainability, based on the letter that we got from the architect, it is a very sustainable building. They've added um, solar panels, so they're, uh, they have a very small footprint. Now that is, it, I guess it's a substitute in effect, perhaps, by the, by the fin, fins. But to me, it's just not a big deal. And I don't see the point of going through a whole public hearing on it. I, I have to agree with Alan. I, I think that, now, I mean, I just don't see, I mean, one of the, no, I, I'm sorry, I was not in front of a computer at all today, so I did not read, read these emails. But you know, I just don't see how, you know, I'm just reading this analysis shows commercial buildings are responsible for 52% of our carbon load uh, more than any other sector. I mean, what commercial buildings? Not, I mean, that's just like this massive pile of, I mean, that's including. It's globally in Northampton. We had a study for Northampton that said it for Northampton, here is the breakdown of where our carbon loads are. And 52% of that is coming from commercial buildings versus residential versus transportation. I, un I understand that. That's what that's from. That's like including the, that's including the bus station, which has buses out of it. And that's including, that's including the gas station. That's including a bunch of things that have, right. that like, Those are commercial, not commercial doesn't, like, th that still doesn't, that's like such a huge category. I think the relevance is that this is a commercial building that we permitted, and so this is the board that has responsibility for trying to ensure that the same considerations that were important to us when we permitted it are met consistently throughout the entire project. So that's the the. the I mean, key I guess here. the question: Are we are we they're, they're going to come? Like, I mean, I, if we feel, feel they need to come, then they need to come. But we're going to say yes because. In the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, and so I mean, we can decide that. That's okay. what we're yeah, talking we say about. Yes. Okay. This is why we're having this like conversation. Real. It's we're you know, it's our yes. purview to and say no. we may say no. Yeah. It's, we may say no. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what we have to decide. And you know, because what we can't do is say you can't use any more energy. You know, but taking away this feature that could potentially reduce energy use on a brand new development versus a renovation of an existing building. You know, this is a brand new development that's already used up, you know, quite a lot 
of material and energy. So that's the real question is how, how important was this consideration when we first permitted it? And is well, that important enough to say, maintain the original plan that we approved? Yeah, I think, as I say, given that what was pointed out by the architect that they installed full solar panels that weren't part of the original design, um, it makes me feel it's, I mean, given that fact, as well as many others, it's hard for me to imagine us saying we are required to install these, this one element that isn't really needed anymore. So I, I read the architect first. I said, oh, it would be very easy to go. But then I, I saw the comments in here. And I'd rather go with uh, the city's comments and decide over it and have a public hearing. And then, because otherwise, I, I, I'm reminded of a hearing about a month ago when a <coughs> developer of a large subdivision came in and there was a mandate for him to do affordable housing. And he just put it off and yeah. put it off and put it off. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, rightfully so, said, listen, you put this as a condition years ago, and mm -hmm. now you're letting him slip away. So I think there's a precedent, too, if we provide these certain regulation conditions on projects and somebody doesn't do them for a number of years and then comes back to us. Um, yeah. So there's a piece there that yeah. they and agreed to. That was a major requirement to include affordable housing at Emerson Way. I mean, that, that was a trade-off for getting it approved originally, right. as opposed to one of a thousand design elements here. So I, guess I hear what you're saying, but I don't think it's the same. So from a sort of procedural perspective, we have members of the public here. Public comment open? Do we take? It's from the it's up to or? you. You can if you'd like. I mean, it seems um, there are folks who maybe want to make some comments that might help us. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might make conversation sense forward to have a few comments. I would be um, leery of having a long right. back and forth because that's this what is not a hearing is for. Right. So, um, and then I just do want to make one statement. I wouldn't assume that the board would have approved it without there was lots of discussion with this building about um, breaking up the massing along mm -hmm. um, yeah. 66 and the reason why the um, design guidelines were talk about shading and windows is for those public street facing um, buildings um, on on major streets it's not just about every building so we will hear from the public if anybody would like to make a comment keeping it brief um, so I'm Bruno Calero um, from ServiceNet 21 Orlando Drive. That's actually um, up there, and um, I, I know you've received the emails from the architect, and I worked with him. I helped build the project uh, with him to, throughout the whole process. Uh, when we put in the first fin on one side, um, it was something that we put in, and um, we immediately didn't like the aesthetics of it after living in the building with the full windows and seeing the view. Uh, with that said, uh, we have put in blinds that are energy efficient that help with the heat and the cold. Um, we have put those in because even with the fin that's even currently there and even prior to that, there was glare um, on the surfaces of the screens and everything else and the architect was actually the one that recommended us put in uh, uh, shades on that whole side of the building due to the fact that the sun comes up. So during the day in certain parts of the day, the shades are coming down and we have gone um, to measures of putting solar up on the building to try to keep energy efficient up. We have smart lighting throughout the whole building with LED to try to keep efficiency uh, and sustainability as much as possible. Um, so the fins are something that aesthetically from our point of view and having living in the building from the outside, it's hard to see, but when you're actually in the building and you're looking out, it is something that you notice. And with the shades down during the day um, and having the energy efficiency, when they do go up because the sun is past in the afternoon, it is a beautiful view to be able to see out. Um, so that's kind of you know the reason that we put a halt to it and stopped 
uh, and ask them to stop and, and decided to come here and ask for uh, the permission to take it down. And I will also say that uh, Mass Development, who also has purview over the site, um, they have approved us to not put that in. So um, that's a comment. And just a quick question. When you decided to install the blinds, did you know that that was in no. opposition to the design guidelines? No, I mean, I would have expected the, the architect to tell us that, but that was something that was in the plans from day one out of our original PNC and building to building that we knew we were going to have the uh, sun glaring there. And mm -hmm. we also had uh, solar ban, uh, which he listed in his, mm -hmm. uh, in his email, um, as another layer of um, protection or, or sustainability that we added to the building. So, yeah. Thank you. And I do have documents for the solar stuff in case, uh, for the shades in case you want to review it. So making them come back this mix just is going to push this two two weeks. I mean, are they can they? No, I'm on. There are more because I mean, is they have stopping to apply. Them from doing business. No, no, no they've not. been in the building. Right. It would just no, give the public an opportunity to. It would right. improve our transparency and give us a chance to review any other calculations or any other data that can be provided. Where are you leaning, George? Where am I leaning? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's too much for me. And again, I wasn't here for the initial discussions, but to make an administrative kind of decision on it, mm -hmm. I would, I'm mixed. I think, you know, I can appreciate what Alan said. Um, I too went over there and I parked across the street at the Keel lot and I looked at the trees. And again, they're not gonna be massive oak trees but they do break up that slope quite a bit, you know. Um, um, but, you know, I think the, the larger question was all of those plans were, of the Finch were put into kind of an energy formula. Um, right. So even though there's hearsay, so to speak, that employees feel that they're, they're still, they're saving energy and these, this and that is happening. Um, there's no data to show that you know, they're offsetting what the Finns would bring to the, the energy kind of output. So I think I'm, I'm leaning towards, again, um, opening up probably to a public hearing mm -hmm. and getting more information myself on it. Yuri, where are you leaning? Um, opening public, yeah. Sam? I think it could be solved tonight. Alan? I'm okay with the way it is. With the proposal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that comes down to me. I mean, I, I mean, personally, I would feel more comfortable if, if this went to public hearing, you know, just for transparency's sake. Um, I think having remembered this application, that energy considerations were significant, that uh, that was, this is brand new development. Um, but I'll do and that, Mark, I guess. I mean, you're like, please don't do that. Uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> it's you. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like it was, it was an important, you know, that there's a difference between, you know, if we were to say something else, like raise the temperature in the building to 70 degrees. Yeah. I don't think it hurts to have the, 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 I don't, I mean, it will not hurt to have more meeting. I just also think that meeting sometimes does hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, my concern is, you know, is again that all of the Hospital Hill development, you know, we have typically had a number of members of the public come and people are looking at it and they're looking to make sure that the, yeah. the things that we are considering when we approve these projects are, you know, that we aren't reneging on, you know, that they're deciding later that things that were important are not important. I think so. we should have the meeting. I think we should have the, the thing in the future. So it's three. Done. Solved. Would you like to make a motion? I, make, I move to have <laughs> a meeting extra long <laughs> um, to go over the fins. It has to start after 10 o'clock. <laughs> it has to start after 10 o'clock. So, so submit for a public hearing. Yes. Uh, amendment, official amendment. Yes. I'll second. Seconds. All those in favor? Those opposed? Alan, you're opposed? Yep. Okay. 
Good, they weren't all unanimous decisions. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Always good. That's yeah. the only reason I voted against. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, you Thank make you. think about it. So meeting will be, uh, I don't know. They have to apply. All oh, right, so applicant will submit a permit for an amendment. Yeah. Scheduled. scheduled on to our next division hearing. So then we just have. Sorry, Mark. I'm sorry that I should have done minutes first for you. I can make a motion to approve those minutes. Well, there are not. Um, yeah. There's like a couple like tiny typos. Um, would you want to just call them out? Really? Yeah, oh, that this. feels terrible. I. Uh, can you make a motion with a condition? Yes, with spelling errors in the August 9th. For Tess's, I, so I move to approve the minutes of May 24th, June 14th, June 28th, July 26th, and August 9th Tonight. with Tess's um, recommended edits. Word smithing. It's just June 28th and August 9th. Okay. There's a sorry right, fragment. Right. Usually Carolyn messes up, so you probably miss some. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's doing the minutes next? Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um, there is no NR, so there could be another motion that I'll entertain. There's no NR. A A no ANRs. No we had ANRs and oh. others, but I moved to and uh, Alan, you second? Are you second? Yeah. yeah. Sam oh, second. Right. All those in favor? Oh, man. Those opposed? <laughs>